I say Bill Nine and Chapters and Isongol. I think all of you are by Jagger Cora Mula Nicuna. I'm here, you are here. Um, my village is here. Abraham is here. Como. Uh, Alan and Tebo, are we still four, are we five members of uh, the committee? Tebo, uh, Benal? Uh, Chair, it's yourself, it's uh, um, Ms. Mabileta, Dr. George. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, Alan. Um, Ms. Abram, um, Mr. Shivambu, and Voter Vessels. So it's, I think it's six, if I'm not mistaken. No, okay. So the meeting uh, correct. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Good to see you, baby. Fantastic. Very well. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm not having anything on my head. Hello. Are your solutions? Can you mute? Okay. Um, let, let's, let's start our meeting, honorable members. Uh, let me welcome members of the committee. Welcome. Uh, uh, Treasury, National Treasury. Welcome uh, PIC present here. Uh, our stakeholders, uh, Second Jalo Group, uh, Mr. Maponya and his team, uh, officials from Parliament, uh, the support team. And if ever there are other stakeholders, they are also welcome. Uh, this is a follow-up meeting that uh, we had last time in the last quarter. Uh, so we are not going to start afresh. Uh, Mr. Maponya requested, for instance, to be given space and time to rework his uh, presentation. And uh, the same with uh, the Second Jalo group, which felt that uh, there is information that uh, they will want to include uh, in their presentation after there were questions that were asked uh, to them. Uh, so let me not go into detail of uh, what we discussed last week. Uh, I mean, last time we, we engaged, uh, but uh, right away moved to uh, apologies. Uh, and the meeting is officially open, okay? Uh, let's move to roll call and apologies. Uh, Alan Tebuho. Good morning. Uh, uh, the only apology is from uh, Mr. Nkwakwa. Okay, Honorable Nkwakwa. Okay. Yes. Tebuho, were you saying something? I was saying I didn't receive any apologies other than yeah, what Alan has just given you. Oh, no, no, thanks. Uh, let's move to item three. Uh, Mr. Maponya, um, as I've indicated in my introduction, that uh, this is a follow up to the meeting that we had last time. So let me hand over to you and your team. Uh, Alan and Tebo, how much time? It's, the meeting is between now and 12. So. Uh, because you are not going to make a new presentation, if you are going to make a uh, yes, slide, sir. Uh, make sure that uh, you speak to the report because we have received uh, some of the uh, uh, stuff from yourselves. Uh, so instead of going line by line, 
you deal with the thrust of the report and speak to uh, the slides if you are going to uh, have a, a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so over to you, uh, Mr. Maponi and your team. Uh, let's see. Mr. Chair, um, as indicated, my name is Kulufa Losekepe Maponya. I represent a company called Matume Maponya Investments, um, a holding company that was formed by the late Matume Maponya, who was my father, and that has interests in various uh, companies, mostly structured around social investments. Uh, I don't know if any, everyone is visible. I know some are behind the camera here in, uh, in, our, in, in our office, but I have uh, Mutusi Malaza on my left who handles infrastructure. Uh, I have uh, Tumi Langa, who is the administrator of To You Foods. And I have uh, Mr. Zek Mohoti, who is the CEO of To You Foods. I have to my right, Temba Mgwambana, who is the MD of uh, MMI Development Management. I have uh, on my right also uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Wayne. Uh, Wayne is also with To You Foods, is the head buyer. I have uh, Ishmael Chabalala. Uh, Ishmael Chabalala is uh, our project manager for the group. He handles all the logistics and projects. And next to him, I have uh, our project manager for Marai Makaya, Mr. Selai Lorasafate. Uh, in Cape Town, we, we have uh, Mr. Michael Bridger, uh, who is our consultant and uh, advisor on retail. And uh, we have our MD for our agriculture and also administrator of our group, Ms. Lindy Wemchembu in Durban. And on that note, uh, I shall uh, proceed to ask uh, for the screen sharing of our presentation so that we may deal with it timelessly as uh, requested by the chair. Um, I'm going to I'm going to make a small introductory statement, and from there, Mr. Mohodzi is going to introduce Matume Mapunya Investments, and Ms. Lindy Wemtembu is going to make a brief introduction of what it is uh, that we are here for. Um, is the screen? Uh, Can we be allowed permission to uh, screen share? Okay, we'll go and Alan, who's the who's supposed to share the screen? Yes, trying to do that, sir. Okay. No, okay. In the meantime, while we're waiting, I do have another screen here. We can catch on it. Uh, our first screen, which is my small introduction, uh, there's a picture there of a delegation of business people that went to Lusaka in 1985 eight, uh, or 86. There's Dr. Sam Mutsuenyan, who was then president of NAFCOC. Uh, my father is in the middle. Um, then there is uh, the president of the then ANC, uh, O.R. Tambo. And there's a gentleman who's not very visible at the back by the name of Willie McBain Charles, who by then was the president 
of Sautakok, which was the southern region uh, chapter of Navkok. Uh, I raised the story of Mr. William McVeigh Charles because back in the day, we, we as Black people, we were not allowed to train in certain areas and in certain industries and with certain commodities. And we were not uh, having access to the funding. And one of the main reasons that we ended up at the PIC was that we had been working for some time, but we ended up at the same place where these old men were when they went to Lusaga to seek the intervention of the African National Congress for a better future in this country where people could do business freely, irrespective of their race, and could excel. Where if you were to conduct several businesses, you would be congratulated, like other race groups, to be a serial entrepreneur and a good businessman instead of a recurring beneficiary. Where we would not struggle to receive finance and be overcharged when we look for finance. And those dreams seem to have been deferred uh, since the, you know, our freedom has been achieved. And we are looking at PIC and we do not give up hope. And hence we are in the standing committee that this will change an instrument like the PIC will be used to enable black business and not only us, it will be used to ensure that uh, participation by black business is meaningful in the economy. And uh, we are taken seriously and we are not, uh, when, we, when, when, when we speak and we are assertive, we are not taken as arrogant blacks. Uh, when we, do and enter other business entities or business uh, industries, we are not taken as, uh, you know, those blacks who do not belong in there, who are not in their place, and who should be uh, culled or should be uh, put in their, in, their, in, in their rightful place. And this is what we, so happened to us once we were in the PIC and we had been find, funded and we and were in partnership and we seek not the reversal of what has happened, but we seek correction and we seek that uh, we proceed uh, into future dealings and that we also uh, have more room for other black entrepreneurs and professionals. And because our company is uh, socially uh, orientated, we want to see a platform whereby we are able to utilize social funds for social good and not uh, have a, a situation whereby social funds are given to intermediaries who then give them to entrepreneurs or do not even give them to black entrepreneurs. Uh, I will give an example. You know, I left uh, developing shopping centers some time ago because of some, something that said, did not sit very well with me. Whenever I developed a shopping center in a village or in a township, I would be asked that, for me to obtain finance. And this is applicable even to the PIC, that for me to obtain finance, I would have the, the racial tone was removed and replaced with a technical tone. I would have to bring national tenants, which simply meant I would have to bring national uh, big white corporate uh, companies to come and replace Mr. Shabalala with his butchery to come and replace uh, Mr. Uh, Matebula with his bottle store. And now we see a country where entrepreneurship diminishes, but everyone preaches that small business is the way to go.
Um, are we having access to the screen? Can we proceed? Now? No, oh, we can see your screen from your, our side, uh, Mr. Mokon. Okay, so the, the, the uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Zakaria Mohoti to proceed. Okay. Um, thank you very much to the committee for allowing us to do a presentation to you on matters pertaining to uh, the follow-up meeting from the last one we had. So what you'll see on your screen, which I won't read for word, word for word, is basically the background of Matungu Mapolia Investments. And it's important that you understand that background because a lot of the time, what, I, what we have seen, what we've experienced is that th this is maybe a one-man show. And I think that's why we came as a group to maybe help understand that this is actually a diversified business with interest in different types of businesses. Most of those businesses socially inclined as well. Um, the business itself, um, if I think about uh, Mr. Maponya, uh, the MMI was founded by Mr. Maponya Senior um, around the 70s, and its interest in the agro-business retail, uh, property, and lifestyle-based offerings. Um, it then happened that uh, Dr. Maponya Scape then took over the business, but in terms of business itself, they, they've been involved in business um, in Limpopo and Pumalanga from about 1976, you know, um, doing all sorts of things from abattoirs to butcheries um, eh, to community participation and, and investments and investments in the in the property business. Now, in, in addition to that, um, I just want to give a quick background, it will be very short, of the to you foods model specifically. And the reason I want to do that is that I think if we keep background, this will tie in with the rest of the presentation for you to understand the challenges that we've had, particularly as the, you know what the PIC is mandated to do. Um, to you foods is a business designed primarily in the retail and basic goods sector. Um, it was started about five years ago um, by the NMI group with myself as CEO. Up to this point, um, this business has been self-funded or funded by personal balance sheet. And I hope it impresses upon you that, in fact, we actually have skin in the game in everything we do. This business also demonstrates the social aspect of our business in that if you look at the South African retail market, as Mr. Maponya has said, in having developed malls. He was asked to bring in national tenants, meaning we kick out all other retailers that are smaller players and we bring in the big ones. So we actually live in a, I would call it a, you know, a, a diversified or disguised diversified monopoly, because that's why it's still big, where the big retailers are still being given first preference. Now, the, the skin in the game in terms of up to this point. We've run this business for five years. We've done everything a business is required to do from feasibility to pre-visibility to commercial viability of this business and profitability. And what we have identified was the apprehension to funding has actually has nothing to do with the business case itself. And so what I wanted to do with the To You Foods opening statement was to remove the individual Mr. Maponya and bring holistically the total business, whether it's Marai Makaya or To You Foods, to actually understand that we're actually not running a one-man show here, we're running an investment firm, which is not particularly popular amongst others if you are black. Because what will then happen is that they will make it an individual thing. Even if Mr. Maponya were to be a, a multiple beneficiary of funding, for as long as those businesses are socially engineered 
to create barriers, to remove barriers to entry for, the, for poor people, particularly in rural areas. For me, I, I would see no problem to fund multiple businesses. That is not even the idea. The idea is not to fund ourselves up to perpetuity. The idea is to be able to be funded so that in turn we pay forward and fund other businesses so that people don't have to go to a DFI to look for funding to enter, for example, the retail space. The, the amount of capex that we put in allows them to enter that space. So I wanted to give that background so that as you tie in what was discussed in the follow-up, you understand where we are currently, the challenges we are facing with funding, and then understand that the history of where we are actually emanates from everything that has happened from, I am just going to say from the PIC's own view of maybe not wanting to find a specific person instead of a holistic business that makes a commercial sense. Instead, a bank is more likely to find you multiple times than the PIC. And the bank, primarily that's not their mandate. The PIC's mandate is the primary. Their primary mandate is actually to fund us. That is actually what they're supposed to be doing. Now, if we're deferring to a commercial bank, I'm just going to posture this and say, it means the PIC in its mandate is failing. And I think I'll, I'll leave it there for Mr. Maponya and the rest to continue. Uh, let me Thank you, Mr. Maponya. Uh, good morning, all. Um, mine is a short one. Uh, but I, I'd like to just disclose that um, uh, my colleague, Mr. Mohoti, has somewhat touched on what we are here about today in just laying a foundation to the problems or the issues of, of concern that Mr. Maponya will speak to shortly. And once really speaks to uh, the mandate of the PIC, you know, the leadership and the PIC in its current structure we foresee it as that it has derailed in its mandate. I mean, I draw it from one in one of its values in that it exceeds it exceed client expectations. And while it invests on sustainable growth, inclusivity and transformation. And what has transpired in, um, and it culminated into the uh, party reports reflects uh, the opposite uh, at the expense of the formerly disenfranchised and MMI is a case in points in that case. And we find ourselves unfortunate that we are a part of an experiment in this process of its transformation of how they deal with assets and livelihoods um, of their assets being in the GPF and the UIF um, assets. And we need to own up the fact that there are some mistakes that the PIC has made at our expense. And the purpose of the Judicial Commission of Inquiry into the PIC uh, was to inquire and make findings, but we did not fall within the, the mandate that it, it speaks to. Um, and we have made various letters of complaints and it actually ended up being to the point that we didn't even have our, our day in the commission. Um, and the conclusions were drawn without our voices being heard. And it is the duty of the PIC to put money to work into the various proper environments of which we foresee uh, MMI being an investment company has been doing and has been fulfilling. So uh, as our main focus, there are various issues, but our main focus uh, for our presentation today is our grievances uh, around the agricultural and human settlement interests. And as such, this, for the sake of brevity, we are focusing on um, the entities known as Mahaya Makaya, uh, the SA, um, SA home loans in consortium known as Bula Chachoko, uh, as well as Bafebi having investment in AFRI, as well as AFRI poultry known as Daybreak. I'd like to hand over to Mr. Maponya to further delve into these issues. Thank you. Okay. We come up Jay, with a problem. Jay, can I, can I 
unfortunately oh. interrupt a bit. Because I don't want to. Yes, sir. Um, Honorable Morolong is leaving now. So I wanted to let the meeting know now before he leaves so that the chair can indicate if that's going to be a problem or not. Thank you and sorry for the interruption. We are going, Morolong. Morolong, where are you going? Organizational responsibilities, Chair, unfortunately. <laughs> well, good morning, Chair. I've got uh, um, other pressing uh, commitments. I really would have wanted to stay uh, and be part of this meeting, uh, especially because I was part of the previous engagement. But I, I really have, uh, you know, pressing commitments that I need to, to, to attend to. Okay. Okay. No, no problem. Okay. Uh, Thanks. Okay. Okay. Uh, back to you, uh, Mr. Maponya. If you can push that by the latest uh, five past eleven, you are done. We allow Segunjalo another forty something minutes, then uh, so that we have an hour to to engage the two presentations. Uh, back Thank to you, you, sir. Yeah. So. Um, as we said, that we will not uh, go line by line with everything. We summed up a problem statement of why we have the problems that we have. And um, we have actually uh, put what we think the PIC misunderstandings are. And we understand that humanly, the PIC would also have its problems with us in terms of what they see us as a problem with and can present that themselves. We seek um, five overall uh, solutions through this dialogue. Uh, the first is to re to, uh, to, to reform the overall relationship, uh, have Mahai Makaya facilities reinstated, even though we have them being reinstated by a Supreme Court of Appeal judgment, which we believe uh, at this stage, uh, with our inquiries at the Constitutional Court, we believe uh, the appeal has been already dismissed. But we do not want to have a litigious or continue having a litigious relationship. We want to continue with SA home loans. And, you know, uh, we are extremely overcharged with our financing because we did not come with equity. And we believe that we have paid our dues and we would wish for us to have some due to our performance and our participation in the performance of the entity, uh, we wish that uh, the PSC would also, you know, consider removing some of the hurdles that, uh, you know, uh, do not allow us to <coughs> participate in profits. Uh, with uh, my family agree and uh, agree, we, we are sitting in a situation where the company is not performing. We will explain that in the, in, during the presentation. And uh, we feel that the solution to that, instead of taking each other to court, would be for us to you know, uh, buy out our original, our original shareholding at the current market value. And we will give motivation as we go along and present that a specific case. In terms of daybreak, we had a, a company and in the management of that company, uh, the industry had certain challenges. That company, we found it with certain challenges. Um, matters changed and views and mandates changed that like uh, all the companies we were involved with, and uh, our shareholding was taken away from us in an illegal and unprocedural manner 
that we do not want to see go through criminal procedures and courts, but resolved amicably. In terms of Mahai Makaya, the background is clearly stated there. And it also gives an indication uh, that we have been in the housing market uh, since 1997. Uh, we have built several townships. Uh, we have participated in government subsidy housing. And we grew to a stage and that our own capital could not suffice. And we sought partnership with a big brother in the form of the PIC, because by then our funder was uh, Development Bank of South Africa and their mandate changed from housing to something else. And uh, we then moved to go into PIC because there was a fund established between PIC and Old Mutual. And we did not see the fund being feasible and we have been proven by the unsuccess rate of that fund that uh, we were correct. And we have always been successful in our developments. We put a, together a vehicle at our own cost. And that vehicle is a working vehicle. And up to so far, there has never been anything to challenge that that vehicle works. The investment rationale is stated, uh, which was incremental housing uh, to the majority of the GPBF members who are the uh, sole benefactors or the main majority benefactors of the PIC. Uh, black professionals, we have a history. We have been working in the industry. We have many hardware companies that are black that uh, started with us many professionals that started with us, many construction companies who are today themselves developers that started with us. The PIC investment in Mahaya Makaya was a loan of 500 million for land acquisition against land parcels that MMI either owned or had land availability rights on of 600 million, uh, contrary to what is stated by popular belief in, uh, in other areas, uh, we had cash in this and we formed a company and to transfer the PIC cash and our land parcels into that company. And that is where the problem uh, started. Drawdown started being used to change, you know, certain conditions in the MOIs. Uh, when we took, this case that we won in the Supreme Court of Appeal, we actually settled out of court the first time around when they refused to pay our drawdowns. And they put conditions that were not there originally in the funding agreement. And we agreed to those onerous conditions, which included employing a CEO, which had been a duplication <coughs> of Mr. Mugamba here next to me. I don't know if Mr. Mwambana's uh, uh, abilities started being in doubt, but we did employ a CEO, which was a duplication. Eventually, they came back and said that we need to dismiss that CEO with very little regard to the human aspect of that person. You could just call him today and just remove him tomorrow. And uh, he was removed at the insistence of the PIC, and the PIC settled, settled uh, his uh, legal uh, entitlement from their own pocket, uh, which uh, we have never put in the, in the company's books. Certain misinterpretations or technicalities would be formed, and they would be discussed, uh, or they would be read, con considered as read. Uh, a background is given as to how we acquired shares in uh, SA home loans. Contrary to the uh, ludicrous statement that was put by uh, a representative of Standard Bank and the Commission, these are the facts on the table, corroborated by the transaction, corroborated by the seller, 
and corroborated by everything else that is in existence that we convinced the PIC that we had the better way to uh, actually utilize the assets. As we had already started talking to them in 2009, and in 2011, we were at the stage where we were writing documents. And in the same spirit of all other transactions, including this one, we spent our money, we brought the transaction to fruition, and only when the transaction was uh, fruitful did we enter into engagement letters and arrangements to recover and recoup our cost because the PIC did not want to take entrepreneurial uh, establishment risk. We had to do that ourselves. And the same applies to the GPF product that uh, we were told that we were looking for a commission or for some form of bribery, whereas we uh, sunk uh, development cost and capital into them. The investment rationale of SA home loans is uh, not to be <coughs> reiterated. It still makes sense. It will still continue to make sense. What does not make sense is that because of the so-called arranging fees, PIC decided to forfeit funding into the structures and forfeit income of about 200 million rents per annum, just because a black child was going to be paid a 50 million rent in recovering costs and risk that they established in making sure that all these things were put to fruition. And they also cost their members between three and 8% more in terms of uh, fees, or interest charged by third parties that they could have serviced with their own money. But Fepi Agri, we invested into the company. We actually invited PIC into this company after we had been doing a business with Avgri, and Avgri was in the process of delisting, and there was a Canadian company acquiring it. We went there for an investment mandate, which has not been fulfilled to date, which the PIC is continuing to deviate from, and which even up to date, uh, assets are still being lost. Silos that were subsidized by government over many, many years have been lost to uh, banking institutions. And uh, I think the list goes on you can read uh, for yourself. Uh, we will also submit a follow-up letter in, in regard to our uh, dissatisfaction that a company that was paying dividends and was ahead of dividends was then changed into an investment vehicle that needed capital calls that all the parties knew very well they were not going to help us meet those capital calls and that they would render us unable uh, or unable to perform on the mandate that we agreed on, the cash flow projection that we agreed on, and the operational model that we agreed on. Agri Poultry. Um, a little bit of brief history of our family uh, being involved in the meat business since 1976 and in production of poultry and abattoirs since 1987. And I started working in this business in 1987 uh, during school holidays and after school. And I have ever since been running poultry and was shocked when my company was taken and given to people who have never seen a chicken uh, in a production environment before. Uh, contrary to popular belief, where they said that we overpaid for the asset, you can see that we bought the asset at one uh, at, at, at one billion fifty. We contributed forty five uh, million, and we brought in additional value, uh, which we negotiated from Avgri. Uh, 
over the purchase and additional assets to make it a fully integrated end-to-end -end, uh, poultry operation instead of purchasing uh, feed from Avgri as the original uh, deal was. We added a net value of 620 million over the 1 billion that was contributed uh, by the PIC in financing us. And the PIC reneged on operating capital and we had to uh, make means and use own resources and also uh, use creativity to operate the company, which we did. What we could not do was come out of the faults that came out of the misrepresentations that came from the deal and the due diligence process, and which caused a problem called the big bet problem, which we managed to sort out within a space of three months completely. And that big bet problem existed a year before, uh, prior to us acquiring, we were informed that it would have gone away. And one of the reasons that we were unpopular with the farmers that uh, went to complain to the PIC to remove us was that the industry wanted chickens of a certain size. They produced chickens double the size that the market did not want. No other company wanted. And we had to pay twice the price per kilo and go to a market and we were also forced to sell to uh, retail clients who forced to buy our product at two rents per kilo less than we produced it. And when we increased the price, we were told that uh, we were managing the uh, company at risk, but we did change, make those changes and the company did turn around. And those people who did not understand how to run the company came in injected 500 million on the spot in the business and claimed that they were very good at running the company. So challenges post investment with all our things, legal agreements, we were forced to honor legal agreements that affect, uh, obviously affected us, which I opted out of them and uh, successfully so. We were made to pay disbursements of astronomical amounts and uh, not market related that PIC entered into agreements with people. We managed to negotiate those, but they still stood with us. Uh, one of the companies that we refused to pay is the company that is being, is the legal company that is being used to pursue us in all these matters, uh, which is uh, Cliff Decker Hoffman. So the litigations, our synopsis is that we are here going to court because the main uh, purpose is to stop us from business. We have been stopped from trading for almost five years. The damages claims that we are entitled to is astronomical and our conscience is not sitting in the right place claiming damages uh, over people's mistake from pensioners and from uh, government employees. Hence, we are seeking uh, that this behavior come to an end. And astronomical costs have been put on us and appeal after appeal so that eventually we are bankrupted by not having uh, the financial resources in, and, and uh, instead of the truth prevailing. And yesterday there was an interesting uh, article in the newspapers where employees of the Isibaya Fund who like us went to the PIC because they had a social cause, not because they could not be employed in banks and in other investment fund managers. Those mandates were cut so that the PIC no longer invests uh, in unlisted investments, not because the unlisted investments are risky, but because they mismanage them. Uh, I don't think it's a, it's a reason for uh, shutting down a business. We have 
had many things uh, in the in the in the media that have also come out. We have also complained to the committee about the chairperson of the PIC being a conflicted party who offered to buy our stake in SA home loan at an amount that I could buy toilet paper for. We had the same chairperson invested in a energy fund or renewable energy fund that gets funding from the PIC. But us who are unrelated, who perform, who have got performing assets, we are labeled as devils. So for the past five years, we have had many people losing jobs in MMI. We have more than uh, 10,000 jobs potential in the building industry that we could have provided lost. We have had a stall because our capital has been lost in another 10,000 jobs into you food, which we, uh, we are always happy to fund uh, should, if anyone does not fund because they have an attitude because we are a reputational risk because we were mentioned, allegations were made against us in the commission, unfounded allegations, which we did not, we, did, we were not afforded the opportunity to respond to because the judge fairly said to us, we were not covered by the mandate of the commission. He could not cover us and he could not comment on us and he could not make a finding on us. But in the last hearing we had the PIC say they were finding against us where PIC said they should uh, investigate if there's an involvement of their employees in those things. So save time in terms of those things and allegations and foundings, I would like uh, our attorney, Mr. Bokeno Malabella to take the last moments and actually reflect uh, on those. We have also in our slideshow made a few suggestions of how the PIC can work in the future with others, because every other company they've invested in, uh, they have eventually not managed to go through with it because they have structural issues and uh, committees uh, instead of using the same fund managers that they have to ha assist them to manage the assets and the relationships. Uh, I've also included some of the things I covered in my opening statement about the relationship between race, privilege, and social identities in business. Why uh, I would be viewed differently and why even people who look like me would view me the same way that prejudiced people will view me. Uh, Mr. Malapen. Thank you, Mr. Mapoya. Uh, thank you, Chair. Chair, I can't hear the speaker. Am I audible? Oh, increase the volume, advocate. Uh, it is as high as it is at hundred percent. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Thank you, Chair. Chair you are welcome. I'm. I'm not going to take. Uh, too much uh, of your time. I think on the last occasion, I did uh, state what the issues were. But uh, I think when we ended uh, the session on the last occasion, it was while I was attempting to respond to certain allegations that were being made by the representatives of uh, the PIC. I want to state it here, and I would challenge them uh, if they are going to do it today, to show us where in the PIC Commission report uh, by Justice and Party is Mr. Maponya implicated in any wrongdoing. Now, just a brief. Uh, background on how the PIC Commission dealt with Mr. with MMI, Mr. Maponya's uh, entity. 
the commission used his case to deal with what the commission called exposure to a single counterparty. And uh, the Mpati report is public record. However, I would refer uh, members of the committee when they have time to look at the report on pages 296 to pages 298, wherein the commission broke down the number of transactions that MMI had with PIC. The commission then gave a value to each transaction. Uh, for example, it says, and this is information that they had received from Mr. Raj, Raj Dad, the executive head, impact investing of the PIC. Uh, Mr. Maponya was given uh, MMI on the daybreak deal uh, was given 648 million of a 1.2 billion commitment plus a further 200 million. And then there was 367 million for a stake in Afgri, 480 million for SA home loan transaction, 79 million uh, that had been drawn down of a 275 million facility for affordable housing developments. Uh, all in all, the commission on paragraph 17, that is on page 297 of its report, came to the conclusion that uh, Mr. M uh, MMI or the PIC was overexposed to MMI to the tune of uh, 2.2 billion. Now, in, the, in this issue of the so-called arranging fees, which uh, the, I think it's the CEO of the PIC started reading to the commission on the last occasions, which I had issues with. He referred to allegations that had been made by an employee or two employees of SA Home Loans who made what are unfounded allegations to the effect that Mr. Maponya and Mr. Wellington Masekese, who is an employee of the PIC, had sought to strong arm SA Home Loan into giving Mr. Maponya 45 million rent and in return, Mr. Maponya and uh, Mr. Maseke would facilitate uh, a further 10 billion facility that SA Home Loan was expecting from the PIC. Now, those allegations have been denied. Those allegations, uh, not much is referred to them in the PIC uh, Commission uh, report. Now, what the Commission said as regards Mr. Maponya is on page 210 to 211 of the PIC Commission report, where Justice and Party dealt with. Uh, the complaints that Mr. Maponya had as to why he had not been called to state his side at the PIC Commission report. And without taking too much time, I will just refer to paragraph 67, uh, 64 of uh, the PIC Commission report where it says, it is clear that the issues raised by Mr. Maponya in his happy David have no relevance whatsoever to the commission's terms of reference. The commission has no authority to decide on whether or not Mr. Maponya or MMI is or is not owed any money by the PIC. 
In any event, Mr. Maponya averred in his affidavit that on the 11th April 2019, a summons was issued by his attorneys out of the Gauteng Division of the High Court, claiming payment of the amount allegedly due to MMI. The defendants cited in the summons are the PIC, GEPF, and SA Home Loans. The matter is being defended. Clearly, therefore, Mr. Maponya's claim is not covered by the Commission's terms of reference, and the Commission is not empowered to consider it. Now, Mr. Maponya finds himself in a very precarious position where almost, if not all, these transactions that I have referred to here are currently before the courts. Now, on the last occasion, uh, I think it was Honorable Shibambo or what, what, um, Honorable who stated, sorry, who stated that uh, because matters are before the court, there may not be a room for the committee to deal with these issues. But I think I liked Mr. Sh uh, uh, Honorable Shivambo's suggestion that even if matters are before the court and you cannot pronounce on them, but you need to look at them and to decide whether or not money is being wasted on litigation whereas parties could be brought to the table to discuss whatever issues are before, are before them. So uh, Mr. Maponya is currently suing uh, PIC to recover this amount of 45 million. And the, the issue which also makes this entire thing about the 45 million uh, ludicrous is the fact that in his evidence at the PIC Commission, Dr. Majila testified to the effect that, uh, and this will be found on, I think, page 22 of his transcript to the PIC Commission. He testified that the P, uh, SA Home Loans had been informed that there was a problem in the PIC granting them a further loan facility of 10 billion. And the issue why they could not do that was because the Standing Committee on Finance at the time had raised certain issues and an amendment to the PIC Act was being discussed. And what was being sought was to establish a new vehicle that could serve a GEPF clients. And to that regard, PIC had already been heavily invested in another company called Bayport Financial Services. And until such time as that issue with the uh, standing committee had been resolved, PIC could not extend a further facility to uh, SA Home Loan. So it would make no logical sense why uh, Mr. Maponya and Mr. Masakese would then say, give us 45 million and we will assist you. Given the evidence of or the testimony of Dr. Majila at uh, the PIC uh, Commission. So, in short, now, <clears throat> then there is the issue of we are currently, or I think it's on the Mahai Makaya issue, which uh, Mr. Maponya referred to. We are currently now in May, still waiting for the Constitutional Court to decide on whether or not uh, they are going to hear or they are going to dismiss uh, the leave to appeal that has been brought by the PIC 
against uh, M Mr. Maponya and his entities after he won his case in the SCA. And so that is, so victim, victimization, uh, honorable members can take many forms. In this instance, courts and legal processes are, and I say this with the greatest of respects, being used to keep uh, uh, these entities in courts at great cost and such that at the end of the day, they will run into default and not be able to service uh, the, the debts because there are contracts here that were signed by MMI, by Mr. Maponya, which he is doing everything to honor. But then he will be sued and told that, no, you are in breach, breaches that do not exist. So, uh, Honorable Chair, I think I will, I just wanted to clarify that issue that had been raised by the representative of the PIC. Hopefully, uh, once the PIC has responded, I will then be afforded an opportunity to, to respond uh, if there is, there is a need. And the other thing is, on this, Recently, on these issues of daybreak, it was interesting to note that there was a report that came out, I think, uh, in MoneyWeb or what, wherein people that were brought into the PIC after Mr. Maponya was strong, strong armed out of this uh, entity have engaged in looting. Of, on astronomical uh, proportions. So I think uh, for now, Mr. Chair, I will stop here uh, and then uh, hopefully I'll be afforded an opportunity should the need arise uh, once the PIC has responded uh, to give a response. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Malapel. Um... I hope you are done, Mr. Maponia, with your presentation so that we can go to the next presentation of Seven Jalo. You will come back when uh, PIC and members raise questions. Is there any yeah. other thing that you want to raise in two minutes? No, we are done, uh, Chair. We, try, we are trying to uh, uh, work together with you in honor and time. Okay. Uh, th thanks very much, uh, Mr. Maponya and your team for the presentation. Uh, PIC, Treasury, and uh, ourselves will engage uh, with the presentation after uh, Sekunjalo. Sekunjalo Group, are you there? Yes, Chairperson, we are here. Oh. We are. Thank oh. you. Okay. Uh, Sekunjalo, you are... Welcome over to you, uh, if you can present uh, for the next uh, 40 minutes. If you uh, can present less than that, uh, we'll welcome that. And uh, welcome uh, Dr. Masondo, the Deputy Minister. Uh, we got your apology earlier on that uh, you are attending to your executive uh, responsibilities. You are welcome. No, no, Inko Miche. Inko. Over to you, uh, Dr. Iqbal. Uh, good, good morning, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman and the members of the committee and um, uh, respected Deputy Minister uh, of Finance. Thank you once again uh, for the opportunity to be able to uh, firstly clarify some aspects of the previous presentation. And to, uh, and, and to, in fact, uh, uh, take your instruction from the last uh, meeting uh, that we address specifically the issues surrounding the party commission. And I thought just as an overview for those members that were not present in the last um, committee meeting, it's important to just uh, emphasize the following facts that, that is firstly that the PIC over a period of um, 
25 years of the second Jala group has only invested in three of more than 80 of our investments. So there's uh, uh, lots of disinformation that the PIC um, has invested in all of our group. The, the fact of the matter is that the PIC has in fact in co-invested with us in only three out of 80 companies. In one, in one entity, there was also a conversion. The next point I want to make is that the PIC uh, and, and the, the companies we have invested in with the PIC, including IO and independent media, are the subject of one mediation, but also in a contradictory way, um, a legal sort of uh, engagement. Uh, so, so some aspects of that is in fact subjudicate, notwithstanding that um, Advocate Wallace and Gorky will, will be as comprehensive as possible. I want to add a couple of minor quick additional points. The first point to remember is that, and something which I said myself when I volunteered to go to the Mpati Commission, unfortunately I went early so could not respond to some of the hearsay things that came afterwards. But the PIC has um, invested in almost 1.6 trillion on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. 97% of that, and in some cases, some people would argue 98,5% of that, if you look at it, is in black-owned, managed, and controlled companies. So, so sorry, in, in, in white companies. So only 1.5% to 3% of that is in black-owned, managed, and controlled companies. That is very significant, uh, two decades and plus, into our democracy where the PIC has not invested in black business. They continue, and I can also tell you that in one particular white businessman, the PIC has invested, uh, a businesses conglomerate, the PIC has invested close on to a hundred billion. So these, there's a significant um, failure of the PIC to invest in black companies on the stock exchange. And that explains why there are so few black companies on the stock exchange. What, what is important about the Party Commission is that it did not investigate these white companies where 97% of the PIC is invested in. To our calculation, we can provide the committee with these notes. The PIC has lost in some of those companies more than 200 billion. One of the most well-known one of that is, of course, Steinoff. But if you look at the Times Media Group, if you look at uh, uh, Tongard Hewlett, if you look at EOH and a whole host of other companies, the losses of the real losses, which is not recoverable under any circumstances, is well over 200 billion. Yet the party commission failed to address um, those companies on the basis that they were only investigating companies that were in the media over the last um, few years. A brief background to the second JALA group. <clears throat> As I said at the beginning, it's a group that has existed for more than 25 years, has more than 80 investments, large-scale investments, has more than 10,000 employees across these investments, um, has more than 100,000 dependents on the group, has revenues across all of its investments in both public and private companies exceeding 8 billion, in excluding investments in some of its um, uh, uh, multinational portfolios, has paid the, the fiscus, um, and we have actually got the full calculation, has paid the fis fiscus over the last 20 years more than 8 billion in taxes and um, various taxes, has invested more than a billion rand in social impact courses over the last 20 years. It is one of only a few black companies listed on the JSC and one of the only black companies that has three companies that it has listed on the JSC. And it's the first black company to go into sectors that were 100% white dominated. For example, areas of the food and fishing industry, e-commerce, technologies, multi-sided platform companies. These were exclusively and media, of course, 
These were exclusively the domain of white companies. And we were the first. And of course, in doing so, we have unsettled powerful competitive interest in these industries. The company is unique in that it has um, no lending from any banking institution across all of its 80 companies. In other words, the group is self-funding and has been self-funding for almost 15 years. Um, it's, it's net, its cash position has always exceeded whatever tiny facilities it may have been given. And to tell you how embarrassing this is, um, Chair, when the group acquires white companies and transforms them to become black companies, and today more than 80% of our top management is black and African. When we do that, we find that the white companies we've acquired, one of our subsidies acquires them, has five times the banking facilities that that subsidiary of ours, which is black has. So an example, if our black subsidiary has a bank facility, of, for example, of, of 10 million, the white company which we acquired had, had a facility of 50 million, yet we are acquiring them and we have a stronger balance sheet. So that speaks to the, um, regrettably somewhat, the fact that our country has not transformed today. And this is very, very regrettable. I must, I must tell you that. Um, it, is, it is quite clear that our company was the target of the Imparti Commission. Out of the, four, out of the 11 companies that were uh, investing, so-called so because they were in the media, four of our group companies were targeted. Nonetheless, we encouraged our people, executives, to go and present and to be transparent. It's important to tell you, Chair, that in 25 years, this group has never been found wanting. It has acted with absolute integrity. Uh, and even the party commission was forced to actually say that in the body of its report, that we have never, ever been corrupt or fraudulent or whatever. I think that is very important. We are a victim of a massive smear campaign. And, and of course, we will not address that today. Um, because of the negative reputation of the Imparti Commission and the negative reputation of the detractors of independent media, we are suffering today and uh, at risk is our more than 10,000 employees and hundreds of thousands of, of dependents. And in fact, what is at risk here is the future of black business in this country because what it simply says, when the banks intervene, what it simply says, if you challenge white business in this country, if you enter the competitive space, somewhat regrettably, you know, they use the levers of financial instruments to cut you off uh, from the capital markets. This is really somewhat regrettable, but for another, for another day. I would like to introduce um, the chairman of IO Technology Solutions, Advocate Wallace and Gorky. Advocate Wallace M. Gorky um, will not just address IO for, the, for, the, for, the, for time purposes, because we're very cognizant, Mr. Chairman, of the time issues. Um, he will address specifically the party commission uh, uh, references made to the four entities within the second Java group. He will cover IO comprehensively because that was materially the most important in terms of the Imparti Commission's report, but he will also cover the second Jarlow um, investment holdings. He will cover um, premier fishing brands and independent media. I'd like to now call upon my colleague, the respected advocate judge, um, uh, uh, Wallace Mgorki, to address um, uh, the, the chair and, and committee members. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Sulwe, Group Chairman, and thank you, uh, Chairperson, Honorable Chairperson, and Honorable Members of Parliament. Let me stand on the protocol that has already been recited by our Group Chairman, Dr. Sulwe. Chairperson, the outline of the presentation is uh, that we've read into sections, uh, six sections. Uh, one, an introduction and background, uh, set, second general investment holdings, section three, IO technology solutions, section four, independent media and saga matter, and five, premier fishing and brands limited, and then an overview of the conclusions. Chairperson, you've already made reference 
to uh, the previous presentation that we made to the Standing Committee on Finance focused on the investment by the PRC and the hostile environment we currently face. The committee subsequently requested that we deal with the Party Commission's report. We are here to present our review of the Party Commission report. Mr. Chair. We emphasize, Chairperson. Can I see it? Chairperson, are you with, with me? Can I should see it? Can you see the screen? Yeah, we can see this. But there's somebody who's speaking on the background, except you, uh, Doctor. Can okay. other participants and members and other stakeholders mute and allow Doctor Toki to? Chairperson, we as I was saying that. Okay, Alan and can you control? Uh, People who have logged in, and uh, if possible, uh, mute those whose mics are on. Okay. Uh, continue, advocate. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. We are here then about today to present our review of the Empathy Commission report. We emphasize the following that the Commission relied heavily on evidence from unreliable witnesses. The Commission made findings without supporting evidence. While the Commission made no adverse findings against any entity within the broader Sevenjal group, there were statements in the report which implied improper conduct or wrongdoing with no supporting evidence in the body of the report. The Commission ultimately perpetrated an, an unsubstantiated narrative that was intended to harm the Sevenjal group, IO Technology Solutions, Independent Media, Saga Mata Technologies, and every other company within the Sevenjal group. According to its terms of reference, the Empathy Commission was established to look into companies which were reported on in the media during 2017 and 2018, and that contained references of alleged impropriety within the PSC. Independent media's media co competitors and detractors intentionally made companies that Sekunjalo had invested in newsworthy for their own subjective reasons. It is important to note the following. It was extremely unusual that out of the 11 companies interrogated at the PIC, four of those companies were companies that the Sekunjaro Group had invested in. 97% of equity invested, the point made already by Dr. Surve, uh, are not black owned. None of these companies were investigated. Notwithstanding these facts, as the Sekunjaro Group voluntarily went to the commission and encouraged our executive to appear at the commission to enhance transparency. Now the Empathy Commission report summary that the report dealt with investments made by the secondary group. And note, secondary investment holding was not part of the terms of reference. Secundaro has invested in four companies interrogated by the commission. The PIC has never made an investment in secondary investment holdings itself. No adverse, adverse findings were made by the Commission against Secundalo investment holdings. IO Technology Solutions and no adverse findings were also made by the Commission. Independent Media, no adverse findings were made by the Commission. Saga Mata, no financial investment was made and no adverse findings were made by the Commission. Premier Fishing Brands, no adverse findings were made by the Commission. We have not dealt with allegations for or against the PIC itself or its employees, as this is not for us to comment on. On section two, then, chairperson of the report, we deal with the uh, references in the report and also with the facts. On the reference one, the IO transaction demonstrates the, the malfeasance of the second dialogue group. This is found in paragraph 127, page 341. This reference is false and misleading. Malfeasance, the legal definition of malfeasance is described as intentional conduct that is wrongful or unlawful, especially by officials or public employees. Malfeasance is at a higher level of wrongdoing that, than non-feasance, that is the failure to act where there was a duty to act. Or misfeasance, that is, Conduct that is lawful, but inappropriate. No evidence leading to the inclusion of this sentence in the report. No irregularity showing in the report 
Therefore, no basis for using the term. The term malfeasance seems to have been an afterthought and was maliciously added to inflict damage to the group. It is defamatory and contradictory as there are no adverse findings against the Punjabi. The next point is regardless of this non servicing of the debt, which amounts to around 1.5 billion. The PIC continued to invest in premier fishing, iron almost in Sega Massa, that is found in paragraph 84, page 317. This reference is false. At the time of the premier fishing and brands and IO listings, no loans were due or overdue to the PSC GEPF. Independent media loans were only due as of August 2018, yet Premier Fishing listed in February 2017 and IO in December 2017. In addition, the PIC was in discussions with the Secondary Group on an exit strategy for its investment in independent media, well before the independent media loans became due. Case study A, the reference, the seven dialogue group influenced companies in which it had inv invested to support independent media. These were media allocations. This reference is partially true. The seven dialogue group took substantial resources from other investments for a number of reasons. 1,600 people are employed within the independent media group. Independent media was continuing contributing to a constitutional imperative being media freedom and media diversity. This was done in a completely legal and ethical manner, which did not have any negative impact on the other secondary group companies. The secondary group is well within its rights, legally, ethically, and morally, considering the mass unemployment in South Africa to support investments in the group as a means of social good and good business sense. Board members within the boards of the second general group of companies are not independent. It was a PIC requirement that the IO board be strengthened with independent non-executive directors. Board members are related uh, to Dr. Surve, are long-serving employees, long-term friends, or are non-executive directors on other second general group company boards. That is in paragraph 107, page 3 to 1 of the PIC report. This reference is partially true. Sorry. This reference is partially true. The secondary group took substantial results from other investments for a number of reasons. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've kept the moment. Section. Yeah. Sorry. This reference is partially true but misleading. The secondary group nominates and appoints its directors at the individual company. AGM, as is standard practice. All shareholders, including the PICGPF, voted unanimously for the appointment of these directors. Reference partially correct, as it is not unusual in South Africa for directors to serve on multiple boards. The second general group's highly competent and experienced directors just happened with Black and is therefore unfairly criticized. A maximum of two second general group nominated non-executive directors serve on the board. The PIC was involved in the nomination of four independent non-executive directors who were subsequently approved and appointed. The, the King Code of Governance is adhered to and stringent governance measures are in place across all the second general group companies. AEI was previously a recipient of JSC awards for sustainability and governance as a matter of fact, I move chair to section C, section three, I'm sorry. Uh, also, the IO reference to in the Impact Commission report, which is case B. No proper valuation to back the investment was done. And therefore, the question remains as to whether the prices subscribed for the shares at a fair and reasonable value. At the listing date, the shares were 43, per, 43 rand per share, while as of 23rd October 2019, the share price was 560 per share, a decrease in value 
per share of 87. That is in paragraph 94, page 318. This re reference is false. Evaluation was done by the PIC team. Testimony and statements from senior analysts at the commission confirm this, including Ibohang Mulebatsi and Sunni Bagis. Are your special purpose acquisition vehicle? His strategy was to use the funds for acquisitive growth. I was valued on a forward multiple of 16 times. Ayo provided detailed uh, PLS prospectors to the PIC. PIC senior analysts came to a share price valuation of between 43 rand and 47. A BTSA formed a critical part of the valuation of Ayo as it was considered a key strategic relationship that would aggressively grow its business. Revenue was projected to increase by 825% premised on the assumptions that existing BTSC customers would transition across to IO and IO would be targeting an increase in market share between one to 2% for the period forecasted owing to its superior triple BE credentials. That is paragraph 97, page 319 of the report. This reference is partially true. AI had a relationship, a, a relationship with BTSA for more than 10 years, and it was highly profitable business. To, to meet the BE you know, requirements of BTSA customers, I was to acquire the operations of BTSA and continue to service its customers. This revenue base was the foundation of the significant revenue growth in the forecast. This is why the BTSA management led by Kevin Hedy, moved to Ayo to, to drive this strategy. The full migration eventually didn't happen as BDSA didn't go ahead with the Ayo sale due to toxic media reports. Key to its evaluation, to evaluation by Ayo was the BDA historical manual financial statements, annual financial statements, which the PRC did not have in its possession, nor was it included in the draft or final PLS. A letter from BTSA to Kevin Hardy, a former CEO of IU, clearly showed that BTSA did not agree with the assumptions made in the, PL, in the PL, PLS. That is in paragraph 95, page 319. And, and then on, on, on facts, it is true that the BTSA financials were not provided, but false as regards the allegations that BTSA did not agree with the assumption made in the IO PLS. Financial statements of BTSA could not be provided to the PIC because BTSA did not give consent for its financial information to be made public. This is normal in the case of multinational companies as they report centrally. The BTSA acquisition was to be valued by an independent professional organization. The BTSA acquisition could only be voted on by the PIC as AEI was a related party to the transaction. The CEO and 200 of its staff left B BTSA to join IO, showing clear support for the intended transaction. The BTSA transaction ultimately did not materialize due to toxic media publicity, recalcitrations of the, recalcitrations I mean, of the, of the PIC. Che, I'm now continuing with the, the reference on the, that is following. Dr. Surve and Dr. Machila both indicated at the commission that the monies received from the PSC are still in IOS bank accounts. This is partly correct due to the fact that the results are published at a point in time and indicate that the monies were transferred back to IO just before the interim and year end cutoff periods in February and 31st August, respectively. The evidence gleaned from various bank statements show that there has been significant movement of the funds between different related parties. This created the impression of funds in bank accounts, but in reality, this was only the case at specific moments in time, paragraph 58, page 33. And under the facts, this reference is false. All the monies were accounted for and are in IO's control. 
As part of IO's treasury function, funds were invested with various asset managers. This was done because a higher return on investment would be achieved through investment rather than the monies being left in a bank account. 1.6 billion was invested with prominent asset managers and 400 million was invested with three loss capital South Africa. All funds with growth were returned to IO and no losses were realized. Funds were transferred back from asset managers to IO as a mandate by the IO, I mean by, by IO. As CFO, Treasury was limited to the financial year. This was at the explicit request of the IOCO and CFO. Then again, the reference, the question remains as to whether the PIC subscribed for the shares at a fair and reasonable value. At the listing date, the shares were 43%, 43 for the rand per, per, per share, while as at 23rd October 2019, the share price was 560 per share, a decrease in value per share of 87%. That is paragraph seven at page, at page 412. And on the facts, we are said that the PIC did subscribe for the IO shares at a fair and reasonable value. Many factors determine evaluation on the stock market. The implosion of Steinhoff and Tonga Hewlett, the OH Malfisense, resulted in a crash of all stocks on the GSE. The JSC is riddled with companies who have self-admitted self to fraud and corruption. The focus on IO was due to detractors of the Segunjalo Group, which included well-known asset managers and hedge funds working in cahoots with some journalists. The CPIC application to notify the PIC investment, the PIC court case, the PIC statements about the IO investment, and the highly defamatory statement to Parliament all contributed to the dramatic reduction of the IO share price. The PIC and CPIC's actions were therefore the primary drivers as regards the negative publicity experienced by IO and the resulting reduction of the share price. Asset managers and hedge funds were shortening the share. It was the second dialogue group that contacted the GSE and the FCSA to investigate this. I continue to chapter under the reference IO transaction had no rationale or media, also a media allegation. On the facts, this reference is false. IO had existed more than 20 years prior to listing on the GSE. The listing of premier fishing and brands, plus that of an ICT company, which would later evolve into IO, had been part of AEI's vision 2020 plan to unbundle these investments through listing. The rationale for IO raising capital and listing was that a strong BE player was needed and had great potential for success in the ICT sector. ICT customers needed to improve their BE scorecard and IO would be well positioned to meet this requirement. IO had lined up a pipeline of service providers to supplement the BTSA value chain. The toxic media resulted in these service provider companies putting on hold these transactions. The following reference, the outright manipulation by Dr. Sulve of the valuation numbers to increase the IO valuation. Paragraph 82, page 316 of the report. This reference is both false and defamatory. Dr. Sulve was not involved in the final determination of the IO valuation for the record. His only involvement was at the beginning of the conceptualization of the IO listing and the inclusion of BDSA. This is corroborated by Malik Sali's testimony at the commission. Dr. Surbe's involvement in the conceptualization of the IO listing was not unusual as he had history and knowledge of the businesses of both IO and BDSA. As soon as IO and AEI put in place a formal listing team, comprising of corporate finance, legal, JSE sponsors, and auditors. He was no longer involved. Dr. Sulbert's involvement is completely reasonable if compared in the context of all PIC investments made. Dr. Sulbert's input was needed in relation to the customers 
and service providers of BTSA to consider in modeling. Dr. Subra was the chairman of British Telecom SA. Dr. Subra has every right to give input to senior executives in the group. Nevertheless, AI and its executives are completely independent. The final PLS submitted to the PIC was compiled without the involvement of Dr. Sulu. Again, the next reference in the Party Commission report, the close relationship between Dr. Machila and Dr. Surve created top-down pressures that the deal teams experienced to get the requisite approvals. Paragraph 88, page 317. This reference is false. Dr. Sube, when he volunteered to testify the commission, indicated that he knew Dr. Machila on a professional level. Dr. Sube has the utmost respect for Dr. Machila, a seasoned professional. Dr. Sube is the chairman of the Segundalo Group and member of the WF New Champions and an investor in numerous multinationals across the, the continent. There is nothing unusual about someone in his position engaging with the CEO of the largest asset manager on the continent. Dr. Sube has engagements with other captains of industry in South Africa and across the world. No evidence was presented to the commission of any undue influence. The commission's own report stated categorically that, I quote, there is no evidence that the impropriety or contravention resulted in any undue benefit for any PSC director or employee or any associate or family member of the PSC director or employee at the time, close quote. The next reference is, emails provided to the commission also indicate that PSG Capital, the transaction advisor and sponsor for the listing, received a generous bonus in the region of 4 million from Dr. Suve for successfully listing IO, that is in paragraph 57, page 33. This reference is false and misleading. Dr. Suve never paid PSG Capital anything. PSG Capital was an advisor to IO. IO paid the fixed and variable portion of its advisor's fees, not Dr. Suve. The commission questioned PSG Capital about the alleged bonus to which they replied, as is normal for transaction of this nature, our mandate comprised of a fixed and variable portion. Without the variable portion, our fixed fee would have been much higher. Clients generally prefer a lower fixed fee with a higher success, you know, success based variable fee. The variable portion was based on a percentage of the capital raised and was effectively dependent on a successful transaction if capital was not raised then. It would not have been due and payable. The variable portion is in line with what we have charged in other non-related transactions. That is in paragraph 109, page 327. This statement is clearly a blatant lie and proves that the commission prioritized unsubstantiated allegations over facts. I now, Honorable Chairperson, move to section four, which is covering the independent media reference in the Empathy Commission report. The first reference there, the investment by the PIC in independent media was due to a relationship between Dr. Machila and Dr. Siru, Surbe. These are media allegations. The facts, <coughs> excuse me, this reference is false. Dr. Surben and Dr. Machila did not know each other prior to the independent media transaction. Elias Masilela was the CEO of the PIC, PIC at the time the independent media transaction took place. The PIC invested in independent media as it had invested in all other media houses at the time, including Tiso Black Star, now Arena Holdings, Kexton, and Media24 via NASPERS. Second reference, the deal was structured as follows, 36.1. The PIC board meeting on 11 March 2013 resolved to participate in the 100% acquisition of IMSA to the maximum amount of 1.44 billion. 
speed up as follows. And the amounts are listed there, Chairperson. I don't want to waste a take time. Then the facts, the PIC made an indicative non-binding commitment to invest 2.4 billion. The PIC only invested 888 million in total and not 2.4 as follows. 253 million term loan to SIM consortium, 167 million, 25% equity in Inven Media, PIC's own account. 183 million to acquire pre existing shareholder loan, also PIC's own account. And 285 million preference shares, capital restructure, also PIC's own account. All these funds were to, were to the seller, went, they went to the seller, Independent Media Island, PLC. On Sagamata, the first reference there says, the PIC had invested 4 billion in Sagamata technology media, again, media allegations. This reference is false. The PIC did not invest financially in Sagamata. Sagamata had raised more than 4 billion from other international investors prior to the listing being canceled. The late next reference in late 2017, Saga Mother offered the PIC to subscribe for shares worth between 3 billion and 7.5 billion. The price for the shares was 39.62 per share. Rand. The deal team valued the shares at 7 rand or 6 per share. It is clear from the evidence of the members of that team that they did not support the transaction. Paragraph 39 to 40, page 29. This reference is false. The PIC deal team supported the transaction, however, differed in the evaluation of the transaction. Sagamata is an MSP multi-sided platform, hence the evaluation methodology was unique and unknown in South Africa. The JSC invested on an independent valuation, and this was done by Silicon Valley-based Redwood Valuation Partners and the University of the District of Columbia. The PIC's valuation team differed in their valuation of Sagamasa. The PIC valued Sagamasa at approximately 8 billion. The transaction made sense for the PIC as it offered an exit from independent media, a legacy print media company. Sagamasa provided the PIC the opportunity to repeat its NASPER success as did Dr. Machila in parliament. The Secundalo group did not dismiss the PIC's offer to buy the Sagamasa shares at 8 billion valuation and was open to exploring ways to allow PIC to participate at a discounted valuation. Toxic media exposure of detractors of Sagamata and independent media resulted in the JSE pulling the listing at the last minute. Next reference, Sagamata listing did not go ahead due to the withdrawal of the PIC media allegation. This reference is false. The Saga Mother listing was based on a minimum capital raise, which was insisted on by the Saga Mother itself of 3 billion. Through commitment, Saga Mother raised 4 billion rand. There were enough investment commitment to meet the minimum capital base. It was after extensive lobbying by detractors of independent media, augmented by toxic media reports, that the JSC pulled the listing the last, the last moment. The JSC withdrew the listing four days before it was supposed to list. After eight months of preparation, based on a technicality disclosed by CPIC relating to one of the subsidiaries of Sagamat. And section four, uh, the, the, the reference there is this, this transaction is merely included for the sake of completeness of the transactions that the PIC undertook within the second group, page 30. The PFB investment was, as with the IO investment, was welcomed by the JSE and investors on listing. IO only became problematic for the PIC as a result of toxic, toxic media reporting. Premier fishing shows the investment acumen and the strong governance of the second group. And section five, uh, Chairperson, um, on is on the toxic uh, media. 
orchestrated smear campaign to undermine Segunjalo Group businesses, a significant harmful effect on the Segunjalo Group companies. Since the acquisition of independent media, more than 3,000 articles targeting Dr. Surve, independent media, and the Segunjalo Group have been published in print, radio, television, and online, accompanied by lots of vitriol. Social media reports that show how the Second Dialogue Group and Dr. Surve have been target, targeted by, among others, Daily Margaret, News24, Prime Media, and Arena Holdings. It cannot be ignored that the propaganda perpetrated by the toxic media resulted in the false and misleading narrative that was ultimately published in the Empire Commission report. This is not only unconstitutional, illegal, defamatory, and discriminatory, but goes against all values of democracy. Segunjaro supports a free and independent media, but the abuse of the group by its detractors in the media is not only defamatory, but unlawful. By way of conclusion, the PIC Commission was established specifically to lift the corporate veil on the PIC's policies and procedures. We have established that four out of 11 companies which are investigated were companies linked to the Segunjaro group. No adverse findings in relation to these companies were made. Certain allegations and findings, such as the use of the word malfeasance to describe the conduct of the Segundalo group, were not corroborated by any factual evidence. Toxic media. It appears that there were also a deliberate attempt to tarnish the reputation of the Segundalo group and its investee companies. The commission was used to achieve this. It is clear that the district of the Segundalo Group, working with competitor media companies, selectively quoted parts of the Party Commission report to portray a negative image in line with the narrative that they have been driving. The Party Commission report was established from these toxic media narratives as per its terms of reference. The Segundalo Group of companies prides itself on maintaining the highest levels of integrity all our listed companies have board charters in line with the King Code of Governance and the GAC listing requirements. Our ability to comply with good corporate governing standards should not be questioned simply because we are a highly transformed group of companies. The Secondary Group of Companies is accountable to its relevant stakeholders, including shareholders and its employees, as well as regulatory bodies. It is known for its strong commitment to economic transformation and social justice. I thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity to present and members of the, the standing committee, members of parliament. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Smith and uh, Advocate Mugote for your presentation. Uh, let's now move to item five, uh, response by PIC, or before response by PIC and National Treasury, uh, Deputy Minister, do you want to come now or you want to come after the two responses? Uh, no, th thanks once more, Chair. I'll prefer to come in um, after the two responses. If oh. It's okay with you. Okay, no problem. Okay, okay. let's start with the uh, PIC. Who's there? Is it the chairperson or is it uh, Mr. Stoller, the CEO? Who's leading the PIC delegation, uh, Deputy yeah. Minister? Uh, the uh, CEO should be here, uh, Mr. Stolle. No, I, I, I am here. Can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Then uh, you can respond in the next. Uh, how long do you think it will take so that uh, your responses between Treasury and yourself should not be more than 20 minutes so that? members have time to engage with the two presentations and the two responses. How long do you think it will take you to respond, Mr. Stone? 
uh, not were left long. with one hour, nine minutes. Uh, should not take me more than uh, 30 uh, minutes, Chair, if you allow. 30? Yeah, 30 minutes. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, Ambassador, uh, members will complain. Remember, this is a meeting of uh, members of parliament. So, uh, yeah. No, uh, then I'll be short and quick, Chair. Yeah. So, 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 so speak, let's... you speak to your slides and they'll be done by uh, five past 11. Okay. Treasure, treasure comes okay. in 10 minutes uh, because you'll have done most of the uh, uh, responses. Then we have almost 45 minutes or so for the members. Thanks, over to you. Uh, thanks, just, just, just before that started, um, uh, Deputy Minister, are you okay that I actually share the, 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 the response that I have? Uh, I'm just to, going to project it, if um, you don't mind. I know that I'm, I'm speaking through the chair of the committee, but I'm, I would like just want my, my principal to just indicate. Again, just share. No, no, come, come, somebody will be clever. I, I, I've confused myself now. I need to get back to you. Okay, just check it there, um, Chair, can you see the slides that are put up? No. Alan and Table oh. Hawk, are you also sharing the slides no. with? I'm trying to share it on my uh, side. Go to Zoom. We can see the CEO. All right. Uh, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to put the slide. Yeah. Can, you, can you see it now? Uh, check, can you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. yeah. yeah. We can see it from then, uh, slide show. Yeah, I, think I just have to use like that. I use my, my, my click. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Chair. I, I'm, I'm going to uh, um, uh, speak um, to the task that um, the committee had provided us at the last um, uh, meeting, where we specifically uh, asked to. Uh, look at the transactions uh, and specifically only look at the background in terms of where we are, uh, the nature of the issues that we're dealing with, and to talk about what we are doing about this. So I will not necessarily respond directly to uh, the presentation that we made today, um, but deal with um, the nature of the transaction. Um, it suffice to say that we, we are not dealing with personalities. We, we, I think there might be a sense that we are targeting specific individuals or entities of uh, specific individuals because of those individuals. And the presentation is structured in a manner that simply speaks to the nature of the transactions and the issues that are involved in the transaction that has led to the action that we are taking. So I, I just want to, to be clear that none of the actions that we are taking, um, to the extent I can, I can speak to those that um, are, from a factual perspective, as opposed to the methods that are before court, we are not dealing with individuals for uh, any, uh, any of the transactions that we have. Um, I just want also to state that um, the PIC was said to be looking after social funds. Uh, the PIC looks after the funds of the government employee uh, pension fund, uh, the UIF, uh, and the compensation uh, fund, the compensation commissioners fund. And those are funds that look after the uh, benefits of uh, public servants, uh, the, the, the contributors who are working um, and, and look forward to getting benefits uh, from the URF uh, when they are no longer able to work because their employers have discharged them for various reasons. Uh, and of course, the compensation fund when uh, they have uh, contracted the disease at work or they have been injured at work. That, that's, that's, that's the fund that we look after, after the PIC. 
uh, we do not, we're not a sovereign fund. We don't have funds that have been allocated to us um, to look after, uh, we look after funds that have liabilities behind them. Um, I also want to state that uh, in both presentations that have been made, it is very clear that the PIC has not in the past refused to fund any entity multiple times. Actually, the reality is, has been presented and as you will see in the um, transaction that I'm going to um, uh, talk to, that the, the fund has happily in the past uh, funded those uh, um, uh, entities multiple times, um, and, and the facts speak to themselves. So when there's allegation that the PIC uh, is um, trying to uh, prevent um, uh, itself from funding multiple times, that is not the case. We, we're dealing with uh, transactions on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, the PIC cannot be held responsible for uh, the terms of reference that we, were given to the commission. It, it, it didn't do that. It was itself subject to uh, investigation by the commission. It was not involved in, in, in establishment of the commission and the, and the setting of the, of the reference of the commission. Uh, it, it was also not involved in the um, uh, investigation and the inquiry itself. It was subject of that inquiry. So it cannot be held responsible for its findings, nor its recommendations. Uh, to the extent that people are, 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 are want to challenge the, 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 the commission, how it did its work, how it made the findings that it has made, and how it has made the recommendations that it has made, those must be directed uh, to the commission, not to the PIC, because it, it was not in any way involved in that process. It was subject to, 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 to that process. Um, uh, without going to detail, I uh, also need to uh, uh, make a statement about certain allegations about the GPF uh, funding uh, entity of the chair of the PIC uh, in, in the entity called Rivego. The PIC is not the funder of Rivego. Um, so I think I just want to make that statement very clear. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, there was reference to uh, the stopping of funding uh, arising out of a complaint uh, of the employees of uh, the PIC, uh, it must be taken its proper context. Uh, it's a matter that I think deals with uh, the allocation of responsibility and happiness about how, how that is done and allegations that are, are made against the individuals uh, or individuals that were concerned in those decision-making processes. Uh, some of them that have, uh, actually have reputationally damaged the individuals and the PIC uh, without actually having, having been tested. And I would like to confirm to the, to, to the, to the committee that uh, the PIC and its uh, governance structures are dealing with those issues that have been put in the, in the public domain. Uh, from then on, Chair, I'm going to go to the transactions and, and answer them in the way that I think the Commission had indicated we should actually answer them. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start with um, uh, 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 the last uh, presentation uh, with Sekun Jalo to give um, uh, uh, the way that the transactions are. Uh, from the second jalo, I'm looking at in, uh, independent media. Um, th this transaction was entered to by the PIC. It's a, um, a transaction in the media and publication industry. The investment date uh, was August 2013. Uh, the invested capital, as indicated, was uh, 579,683,83 million rand. Um, the funding was debt. Uh, the valuation at, as, as we speak is uh, 709 million, uh, 839, 328 million. Um, if, 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 if you want to understand why the valuation is higher than the capital, um, the reason is the uh, interest that has been accrued um, on the capital that has not been repaid. Uh, the full amount of outstanding debt in terms of the term loan agreement was due on the 17th of August in 2018. Um, to date, uh, SIM has failed to repay the GEPF, the outstanding amount. Uh, as of 31 May 2020, the outstanding debt due owing and payable by SIM to the GEPF under the term loan uh, facility agreement was an aggregate amount as indicated um, in, in, in my previous um, uh, slide, uh, 789, 839, 328.45 that, that, that That's the number that was owing. The report of the Judicial Commission of Inquiry into allegations of impropriety at the Public Investment Commission dated uh, 13 of December 2019 
are recommended that where money has been lost or investments made where the funds provided have not been used for the intended purpose, this must be identified, quantified, and recovered. What are we doing? Uh, on 20 September 2018, uh, SIM proposed a partial settlement of amount of 330 million payable in tranches of um, over four years. Uh, the PIC declined the offer, and during June 2020, the PIC has subsequently issued uh, um, uh, action proceedings for the recovery of the monies that actually owe it. Um, so that's the status as far as the second general transaction is concerned. Um, then we we'll go to independent media. The amount that was invested, I think, in line with the previous one was in October 2013. Uh, the ownership was 20, 25% equity for 1,000 plus A uh, variable, cumulative, redeemable, and no par value shares. The invested capital was 183 million. Um, and the current value, again, is uh, over 392 million, 694. Uh, 181 and 70 cents. That's that's the amount again um, um, uh, with um, um, the owing interest on those amounts. The independent media's performance was significantly impacted by the continuous decline in the print media, um, and then of course the deteriorating performance resulted in independent media media defaulting. Uh, and the asset of 31 October 2020 are uh, the outstanding debt due. Uh, owing and payable by IM, independent media to the GPF, under the GPF shareholder loan agreement is the amount that has already been indicated, 392,669,984,181.70 uh, uh, chair. In terms of what action are we taking on, 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 on 13 July 2020, uh, the, the PIC dispatched an uh, enforcement notice to the uh, independent media um, for, the, for the payment of the loan. On the 3rd of September 2020, the PIC dispatched a further letter to the Intercom and IM informing them that the PIC remain available to engage in good faith on negotiations to resolve the default. Uh, on 19 November 2020, the GPF delivered a default notice to independent media and on 27 November 2020, the GPF delivered a letter of demand to independent media uh, in accordance with the GPF shareholder loan uh, agreement. During January 2021, the PIC has subsequently issued an action of proceeding for the recovery of the said amount. Okay. Then I move on to uh, the, the Mahaya Makaya. Uh, again, Che, uh, the, 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 the PIC. Um, um, invested uh, or took an ownership stake of 25% uh, in Mahaya Ma Ma Makaya uh, and invested over 500 million in, 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 in the um, entity. Uh, Mahaya Makaya, I think, was uh, clearly um, uh, explained to the committee as to what it is. So I, I won't dwell in, on, on, on re describing what uh, was already done, but to simply indicate that the, the nature of the issue is that. Uh, Mahaya Makaya Housing has failed in its obligation to provide the PIC with uh, frequent reporting as per the legal agreements. Uh, that Mahaya Makaya Housing also took unilateral decisions to appoint um, the CEO, as I think was reported, that there was a CEO appointed, but that decision was actually taken unilaterally without following correct procedures in terms of the memorandum of incorporation. Um, Mahaya Makaya Housing also acquired land, as was stated, uh, from related parties without uh, getting necessary authorization. The PIC instituted um, uh, a draw stop on Makaya Makaya Housing and took the matter to the High Court, and a judgment was granted in favor of the PIC. Um, the PIC then exercised its security and took 100% of Makaya Makaya Housing. The PIC then dissolved the board of Makaya Makaya Ma, 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 Housing and terminated the services of the directors of the former shareholders. It is correct that the, the matter was taken uh, on review to the uh, Supreme Court of Appeal uh, in which the, 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 the judgment on which the PIC had acted uh, was, was overturned. 
And it is correct that we have taken the matter on review to the Constitutional Court, and no decision has made as far as we are aware on that matter. Um, the issue here is that the, the land valuation process um, was concluded in, in, in February 2021. Mahaya and Makaya uh, have indicated that they will challenge the validity of the shareholders meeting that resolved uh, to dissolve the board. The GPF has filed an application for the for the a leave to appeal, as I've already indicated. Uh, then another entity, and it must be recognized that these are all entities that were spoken about that we are supposed not to have funded, but th those are all in the same stable. So, so the, 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 the allegation that we are not prepared to fund multiple entities is, is not correct. Uh, uh, which is the vehicle that is, um, uh, we are co-investing with uh, in SA Home Loans. Um, again, this is a vehicle which we invested in in June 2014. Uh, we own 50% or, um, of, uh, of that uh, in, in, in conjunction with uh, uh, our, our BE partners um, in this instance. The invested capital at the time was 914 million, uh, and the value of that at this point in time is 1.68 billion. And, and this is the value, I think it's probably the one uh, entity where the, 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 the valuation is, 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 is actually one that is performing. Now here, the issue is not about the, the, the investment itself, as I think was clearly stated. This is about the, 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 the claim of a fee uh, for the uh, transaction that um, uh, led to this investment in higher housing. And again, as was correctly indicated, this is a matter before court. Um, uh, uh, and I, I think I'm, I'm, I won't add more than what I think has already been uh, shared with the committee. The next entity, again, in the same stable, again, it was spoken about um, in, in the previous uh, presentation. Uh, it's it's uh, Bafefi uh, Abgri. Uh, this was a transaction entered to in April 2014. Uh, the invested capital there is uh, 366 million. Uh, the value of that today is only 55 million. The term loan matured after five years and was due to be settled on March 2019. Uh, the loan is in default as we speak, which is why there is the current uh, legal action that's being taken. Uh, the Bafepi did not uh, contend the notice of breach that was issued uh, as a result of non-saving of the loan obligation. The PIC has decided to perfect its security in relation to the session and pledge of shares guaranteed uh, to the GPF by Bafepi because of the default. Uh, the PIC has obtained a competition commission approval prior to taking over the shares of Daybreak. So this was done with due process. Uh, once the approval from the competition commission was obtained, the PIC exercised its rights in terms of the pledge and session and took over the Bafepi shares. Advance notice of the removal of the directors of Bafepi from the board of Daybreak was issued and they did not contest uh, their removal by the PIC in its capacity as the sole shareholder at the time. Mr. Maponya voluntarily resigned from the board of Daybreak as Bafepi was no longer a shareholder uh, in um, uh, Daybreak. Uh, Chair, the last one that I will talk to, again, it's also a subject to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, court proceedings, so I won't dwell on it other than to state the facts, uh, is that uh, this is a transaction that was um, uh, 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 allegedly entered to um, uh, in December 2017, um, where the PIC is purported to have uh, taken 29% of uh, the shareholding in IO. Um, at that time, an, an investment capital amount of uh, 4.9 billion was made, and this is the amount that's currently uh, being contested. Uh, the, val the value of, it, it wasn't an equity instrument, it, it said, and the value of that at this point in time is only 698 million and 47.47 million shares. Uh, the PIC subscribed, of course, um, I think I'm just repeating the same. The PIC's internal governance processes um, has, have, were found not to be followed uh, in, 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 in entering into, into this transaction. The valuation that was already shared um, with uh, the committee was actually contested within the PIC. Uh, and as, as indicated, this is a matter that is currently uh, under court review. Uh, that, that is it from me, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Stolle.
Trey Jari, over to you. Chair Unati, uh, Unati, C can you start, please? Uh, Dr. Mason, how are we succeeding with UNAT? Just a minute, Chair. Okay. Perhaps we, we're waiting for Unati. Perhaps I should just say something. If uh, I may, Chair. Okay. Over to you, Dr. Mason. Yeah, thanks. Well, thanks once more, Chair, and uh, members of the Standing Committee on Finance, uh, PIC colleagues, National Treasury colleagues present here, and members and representatives of the Segunjalo group, and uh, Matume Maponya Investments, uh, respectively. Um, Chair, I think uh, the Minister of Finance and Treasury, as well as the PIC, we briefed SCOF on the 2nd of December uh, 2020 on a government's response to the Mpati Commission and the recommendation and how we together with the PIC are intending to um, implement some of the recommendations that were made by the Mpati Commission. And we are happy, Chair, to come and report regularly on progress as and when requested to do so by SCOF. The meeting today and the one that was held on the 17th of March are largely responses of parties uh, mentioned in the parties report. So I will assume that this session is not a platform to further report on the progress we are making in implementing the party um, commission recommendations. Having listened very attentively by the members and representative of the Second Jalo Group and Matume Maponya Investments, respectively, it will seem, Chair, that uh, there is basically two issues, and there's a third one which I'll flag right at the end. The first issue seemed to be a huge discontent regarding the findings of the Mpati Commission. And two, there seem to be issues and uh, disputes over the transaction between the PIC and the parties involved. And our view as National Treasury is that uh, those uh, who are grieved, who are not happy, with the adverse findings by the 
um, party commissions. Uh, they do have a, a, a legal recourse. They can challenge this legally. Uh, that is the findings of the Mpati um, report, uh, because we don't think that this platform and ourselves, we can amend the findings or set aside the Mpati Commission uh, report. So we will strongly recommend and suggest that uh, uh, those who are not happy with the findings of um, party commission, uh, they should um, approach the necessary authorities, take legal action insofar as this issue is concerned. And the second issue, as I said, it seems like there are issues around the disputes over the transaction between the PIC and the parties concerned. And our view, Chair, is that uh, the PIC should be allowed to do its work. Uh, let's allow the PIC to deal with these issues with the parties concerned. And the reason why we say so, Chair, is that uh, the PIC has a fiduciary responsibility to its investors, GPF, UIF, and the mandate that they've been given. It is the PIC's responsibility to protect and recover funds where the risk exceeds their appetite, whether these companies are black or white owned. As the PIC invests the workers' money, I think we need to remember that uh, this is the workers' money um, so as the PIC being given the mandate to invest these funds to grow our economy, but also importantly to transform the economy, they have to generate returns for these workers. And therefore the Ministry of Finance or SCOF or anybody cannot tell the PIC how to act against those that they funded. They need to do what they need to do consistently and fairly, taking into account the investment mandate from their clients. And then, like I said, it's largely workers. And I also want to caution all of us, including the Ministry of Finance, MPs, that we should not come across as seeking to tell how the PIC should settle with any party at the risk of repeating myself. Let's leave this matters to the PIC. Otherwise, that will undermine the role of the PIC, its mandate, given by GEPF and other uh, investors. And we should also remember that uh, the PIC is an asset manager. Investors, like I said, the GEPF, and they can decide which other asset manager um, should manage their funds in their interest and therefore it's it's important once more to make sure that uh, we allow the PIC to do what it ought to do in the interest um, of its um, uh, investors but of course in the context of growing and transforming the economy and I think the the third point which is some of the allegations that are being made against uh, members of the PIC uh, including its chair. I think uh, I will suggest that uh, if there are issues um, against certain members of the PIC, please do use the right platform to raise these issues, because I think it will be unfair to cast aspersion on the chair of the PIC in his absence. Um, so I think it's important that uh, those allegations, they need to be treated separately. I would not be comfortable, chair, to be sitting here dealing with allegations that don't seem to be substantiated 
because uh, I had the um, uh, Mr. Matume making some serious allegations um, against the chair, which I think um, he knows what to do if there's such um, wrong things that have been done by anyone. And I also want, want to, I would not want to respond to various allegations against the National Treasury, PIC, the conduct authority, allegations out there in the media. All I want to say is that uh, as a ministry, our view is that the PIC, the conduct authority, the FIC, that is the Financial Intelligence Center and Treasury, we, we do have, this institution have a lot of credibility. And I do think that it's important that if we don't have hard evidence to show otherwise, it's really, really unfair for us to continuously attack these institutions. Because as we continuously to do, it, to do so, when we don't have credible uh, evidence, we undermine the investor confidence in our country. And these institutions have played a major role and they do continue to play a major role in making sure that South Africa is one of the most competitive, attractive investment uh, destination. So in short, Chair, uh, my view, our view is that uh, SCOF is not the right platform to seek to amend the party report um, on behalf of those who are being mentioned in the report. Aggrieved parties must exercise their legal right to go to court if they want to challenge the findings of party commission and not expect parliament to do so. So, um, like I said, I will, we also want to reaffirm our confidence in the PIC, the Conduct Authority, the FIC, the National Treasury. Let's allow them to do their work without fear or favor, because these institutions, they have public mandates and they act in the best interest of the country. And I, we have not seen any credible evidence to the contrary. So that's all that I can say at this stage, Chair. Um, I don't know if Nati, you want you you back, you want to say something? Uh, good afternoon, Chair. Um, good morning, Chair. Thank you, DM. Uh, I don't know what happened with my line, uh, but nothing, Chair. I was just going to, I mean, nothing, DM. I was going to introduce, um, you know, the nature of, of your response. Thanks. So, Chair, that, that is our response. Um, Iela Kuala, we'll come back again if we are required to do so, Chair. Okay. Okay, thanks, uh, Deputy Minister. Uh, let me now allow uh, members of the committee to deliberate uh, on the two presentations and the responses from PIC and National uh, Treasury. Uh, Alan and Tebuho, you will assist me with uh, uh, identifying those uh, who want to make inputs, those who have uh, raised their hands. Over to you, members. Uh, Honorable Shibambo. No, th thank you, sir. I think the, it's a, a, a very sorry understanding of this process. So this is the initiative of um, this engagement. But I want to reflect on some of the issues that have been raised here. So the context is that we have got the companies that the PIC invested in on behalf of the GPA for 
the Compensation Commission or the Unemployment Insurance Fund. And they've got disputes which they say have been in court some days, these even judgments in terms of that. And then the PIC is dragging this process in the courts and in the process, they lose the reputation of those companies to the extent of them losing everything else that they need to operate in the business environment. And then they've been making pleas with the PIC and the National Treasury and everything else, and then, then wrote to parliament to say that, can't you give us a platform to raise our concerns? That is the context within which I understand this. That is why when we, we did, had this first deliberation prior to this recess period, we then said to the PIC that, is there a, a process that you can engage in that, is, that does not involve litigation that will of course insulate, protect the money of workers? That will, that will uh, protect the investments that the PIC has made, but goes beyond litigation in terms of an exhaustive process that has to be put into in, 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 in all those uh, instances. And there are broad principles, which of course we can, we can talk to. It is our role as parliament to oversee these institutions and our interest as simple that we want to protect the pension funds, we want to protect the unemployment insurance funds, we want to protect that money. So we should care of just which investment decisions does the PIC make on behalf of the GPF and the other clients that it manages the money on behalf of and everything else then. I see in one of the uh, findings of the of the of the party commission report, it says that the PIC was overexposed for investing 1.85 billion rands. And there's a question which I've always raised and 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 stayed on for several times that in NARSPAS, the PIC on behalf of the GPF has got exposure of I think more than 250 billion now, if not just under 250 billion rands. And we had cautioned against that to say that. With the crisis that defined staying off and the huge amounts of money which had to be written off as a consequence of staying off collapsing, where is the wisdom of overexposing such huge amounts of money like 250 billion rands? That is a quarter of a trillion in one company, which because of the dynamics in the global economy can 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 have the same fate. Uh, as staying off. And that, that is one issue which is a broad principle we should uh, look into in terms of what uh, should happen. And as a, as a principle, the, the, the investment money perhaps must have this engagement with the GPF itself to say that, what is your investment policy? Like, what is the investment mandate to the PIC? Why do you allow a, 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 a bigger portion of your eggs to be put in one basket? It's one of the, the broader policy issues that must then be. The other issue which we have to then talk to as well is these things of the allegations against the chairperson of the PIC board, the Royal Cause. And, and to want to present it as if it is being brought for the first time here, the Prime Minister is less than honest because in the December meeting where the PIC appeared here, I asked him the direct question if he is in an effort to buy parts of SA home loans and even sent a document to the chairperson of the committee, to the minister and to yourself to illustrate that it looks like the chairperson of the PIC is busy trying to do deals with the PIC and these are deals that are in dispute. And perhaps this is what we should be talking to now to say that here are people who are saying there's a dispute on a certain investment which we had proposed to the PIC and the PIC were in courts back, back to back, there's, there's no resolution. And in the middle of that, a chairperson of the PIC puts an offer to purchase those shares of that, that particular company. 
it's one of the issues that must be dealt with. It's not just an issue of police. It's not a criminal issue. It's a governance issue. It's an ethics issue which National Treasury and the ministry must then look into closely. So it can't be correct that every time we have to deal with our oversight rule and making sure that National Treasury and the PIC are properly managed, then your resort is to say, go to the police station to report a case and everything else. It doesn't work. Like, it's not as simplistic as that. It's a far much more complex uh, issue that we must then deal with uh, differently. And we should still demand a response from the PIC board chairperson. We will send him and the CEO the, the document, the deal document where they were trying to buy SA homes. And then he must either distance himself from that or confirm that. But also this must be located, Chairperson, within the fact that we have got an amended legislation now that uh, gives guidance on how the PIC board should be constituted and who must be chairperson. We wrote the minister to ask why is that not being complied with? And there is this complete ignorance of that. The fact of the matter is that at governance level and at board level, there is no stability in the PIC. And, and that is inappropriate so of, of all things that we can deal with. We can't just say, leave the PIC to handle its own issues when the PIC is unstable. And you know the central role that National Treasury has to play in bringing stability to the PIC because the PIC is owned by the South African government and the main shareholder there is National Treasury. It can be a hands-off approach in terms of the investment policies and the governance stability that is uh, needed to accrue in, in, in that uh, 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 asset manager. Now, there, there, there are issues which perhaps must be dealt with at a, at a broader policy level. The, this issue of multiple beneficiaries. I think that there should be a ceiling of just how much exposure can the PIC have in, in one company or around the same individuals. But this must be, this must apply to all companies, black and white. So if we have risked 250 billion in Kosbeka, possibly more than 150 billion in the in the Remgro, Rupert Associated Companies, in RMBA, and the MMI, and the, not MMI, this uh, momentum in assurance, in all those companies, we need to look into that in detail, and a variety of other entities that are associated. Then we must talk to these things of just how much exposure can the PIC nominally have to all of the investee companies so that we are then able to then uh, give a clear guidance to how that must be handled. It, it must not be a discussion that is shelved elsewhere. Because there, there are obvious inconsistencies where you say you're overexposed for 1.85 billion when we are invested for 250 billion in a company which we, we, we still think there's nothing wrong despite the fact that some of the investments that were invested in these so-called listed companies got to lose uh, the PIC a lot of money. So Chair, there is a framework and scope within which we can advise the National Treasury and the PIC to explore a mechanism of settling some of these issues in a way that is not necessarily litigious, it does not involve litigation. So, so in the and in the interest of workers, in the interest of of course of driving transformation in South Africa, South Africa's economy, and to, to take a hands-off approach is problematic, and in this context can actually be reactionary. So there has to be a different mechanism that is adopted in terms of how this is handled because some of these issues it's just it's not just an issue that can be resolved through court uh, processes. If discussions are held there can be some degree of consensus. And of course, if there is no agreement at all amongst all the parties involved, they can go to court to resolve all, all, all of those issues. I understood all the presenters to be saying that there are no adverse findings in the coalition report. It's not about that. It's about the acrimony that exists between them and the PIC and some attribute this one to the self-interest of those who are managing the PIC, but two, to a systematic mobilization of delegitimizing all black businesses in South Africa. 
that has to be dealt with differently. The, the national treasury must, must not fall into a trap of, of the agenda that seeks to undermine black business. Let's deal with it differently. And you can be able to do it far much more maturely without compromising anyone. And, and of course, protecting the workers' uh, monies and interests. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, thank you, Honorable Shbambo. Uh, Honorable Kosan. No, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair, and greetings to all, all Honorable Members, the Honorable Deputy Minister with the Treasury Team, uh, the PIC, the Segunjalo, the MMI, and all other stakeholders uh, present. Uh, yeah, I've taken note uh, of what the Deputy Minister uh, has said, uh, that uh, perhaps this may not be the correct platform to handle issues of dispute and stuff like that between the PIC and uh, the other structures like your Segunjalo group and the, the Matume Maponya uh, uh, investment. However, Chair, uh, I think I've got just uh, uh, three simple questions. Uh, because from what I'm, I'm, I'm hearing from both uh, the, 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 the Matume Maponya investments and from Segunjalo Group, they are saying, if I'm quoting them correct, that according to them or according to their understanding, there are no adverse findings against them from the party commission. And I think it's, it's one thing to say, yes, we accept that there are adverse findings against us. However, we are disputing those findings. And therefore, I think an advice that would say, uh, let's find other, uh, let them find, uh, legal routes to contest those particular findings. But if they are saying, according to their understanding, there are no adverse findings against them, I think then it's, it's, a, it's a different story altogether. Uh, uh, so my simple question to, to the PIC would be, are there adverse findings against the Segunjalo uh, group and the uh, Matume Maponya investment from the party commission. Are they at best finding? Because from what I'm listening to them, it seems as if they are saying, as far as they are concerned, there are no adverse findings, and of which is a different thing than saying, yes, they accept that there are adverse findings, but they are disputing those particular findings. That's number one. Uh, number two, uh, from what the second Chalo is saying, uh, they are also disputing a number of investments which the PIC uh, claim to have made to different entities which are falling under the Segunjalo group. And I think for me, it's a serious concern that uh, uh, in this, uh, at, at our level where we are sitting, uh, Segunjalo, it's, 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 it's saying uh, uh, there's a serious misrepresentation from the side of the PIC to say they've made investment on this uh, particular entity and on this particular entity because they were co they were quoting them to say no this one is a misrepresentation this one is a misrepresentation this one is a misrepresentation and I think it's a serious concern on my part I would like to hear from the the PIC on that and lastly uh, I think uh, one last serious allegation also from Segun Chalo is that the PIC is seen to be mainly uh, uh, investing in predominantly white companies and is seen to be over deliberately overlooking black companies and I think that's also a serious allegation uh, uh, I think after so many years of 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 of, of, of having uh, 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 got the democratic breakthrough of 1994, if this allegation is true, I think it would be, it should be a serious concern to us as the standing committee on finance. So I would like to hear the comment of the PIC on that chair. Thank you very much.
Thanks, Bush Bambu and Bull Scassana. Alan and Tebu are there other members? I can't see hands on my side. Uh, no, no other members besides two previous speakers. Okay. Uh, before I hand over, let me ask a simple question to PIC. PIC, do you have a black economic empowerment policy uh, on how you want to support uh, uh, black people to emerge? in the business sector. Um, simple as that. Uh, over to you, Pierre. Must I answer, Cho? Must I answer? Okay. Over to PIC and uh, National Treasury. Uh, Deputy Minister, I'm, I'm gonna take the, the if, if you allow me, Deputy Minister, I'm gonna take the, the direct questions that relate to the PIC and try to address those. Uh, Chair, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, CEO. Go ahead, oh, please. All right. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Uh, Chair, I'm going to start. Um, um, I, I think the, the Honorable Mr. Shibambu raised a number of issues, but the one that I want to, 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 to reiterate, and he's done this before, and I'm not contesting it, uh, our exposure to certain companies, I think um, specifically the one that he mentioned being NASPERS. I've, I have in the past indicated that uh, the Honorable Minister is correct. We are overexposed to NASPERS. We are as concerned as uh, the committee is concerned about our exposure. However, it needs to be understood in context. And the context is that NASPERS, uh, for, and I, I, I might come across as if I'm singing in their praises, but that is the re reality. It, 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 the reason why it is as big as it is, it is because it has performed very well over many, many years. So the exposure is not necessarily that we have just been buying into NASPERS. It is that the, 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 the relative growth of NASPERS has been much higher than the growth of any of our other investments. Um, uh, and and, and that's, the exposure actually is, in a sense, beneficial. Do we need to diversify to the extent that there are mechanisms to do so? We definitely uh, will support the, the honorable members' uh, um, concern that we do need to diversify, but it needs to be understood that the reason is purely because this is one asset that has performed significantly better for the, P for the PIC and its um, uh, clients. Uh, then there were uh, specific issues that relating to the chair. Uh, I think we have in the past um, uh, had to answer the questions about the chair. Of course, the chair is not here to answer for himself, but the facts that I'm presenting are facts from the PIC's, P PIC's perspective. I cannot talk to engagement that the chair has outside of the PIC because we're not privy to that. But I can categorically say to, to this committee, uh, and you can uh, come back and ask me in the future, there has been no approach by the chair of the PIC to ask for any funding from the PIC for any of his entities that we uh, have, have had to deal with in the time that he's been chair. Uh, and I, I can't speak to to the time before I was here or before he was chair, because he's been running businesses long before he was the chair of the PIC. But I want to categorically say that in the time that he's been chair of the PIC, he has never come to the PIC to ask for any funding. Is he having engagements with parties outside of the PIC? I cannot speak to that, but the committee must rest assured that he has never, never asked the PIC to look in funding for any of his entities. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Then, um, uh, to move on to uh, certain specifics around uh, why we are exposed to certain assets and not others, um, uh, your question, Chair, is, is germane. Do you have a policy about funding uh, transformation broadly, uh, black in, in, in economic empowerment specifically? The answer is yes. Um, um, uh, and, and, and that's a categorical reason. And part of the reason why we are here actually arises from that, because we have historically funded black business. Um, so there's never been an, a, 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 uh, a shying away from taking the responsibility to, to the extent that we can, while we honor the mandates of our clients in terms of their return expectation from being conscious of our, our need to look at social investment and development and transformation in general. That, that has always been accepted. It still is accepted. And I, 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 uh, coming out of the PIC Amendment um, Act, um, that is actually part of our uh, mandate going forward to the extent that we do so with um, the instruction of our clients. That will continue to be so, Chair. So there's no, there's no 
a dispute about the fact that we, we, we know, we understand, we, we take on board our transformational mandate in investing and investing to actually achieve uh, financial results while we are conscious of the need to transform the economy. So that's the reason. Uh, our clients' uh, uh, intentions to invest in unlisted um, uh, 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 investments that are not in the JSE uh, is, is very clear. So if you were to look at the mandate, for instance, of the GEPF, the UIF, and the com compensation, com their, their commitment to uh, uh, invest in unlisted to extend that uh, it is in bankable projects that give us the return, um, uh, that is very clear. The dispute that we have with our, our, our investing companies is not about whether we invest or not. It's about the fact that we have invested and the terms and conditions of those investments are not being met. That's the reason why there are disputes. It's not because we have not invested. The reason why there are disputes is because we have invested and the terms and conditions are not being met. Then the last point that I'd like to, 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 to then share, Chair, is that the, the way we invest um, uh, is actually informed by a number of different instruments, what we call different asset classes. Um, uh, uh, lending money to government or to companies is not the same as buying stakes in them. Uh, that speaks to uh, uh, how we invest, what we call an asset class, the bond or an equity investment or a loan. Uh, that's not the same. The same thing speaks to how we invest in, in, in a listed entity and how we list in a non-listed entity. The instruments are not the same. The rights, the obligations that come with those are very, very different. And how you invest in them is also different. So, so yes, I think one makes the statement that when we invest in the JSE, people can make the, 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 the conclusion that we're favoring white companies. No, we're not actually investing in the JSE to favor any company of any color. We invest in the JSE in listed instruments. On the unlisted side, we invest directly or through other intermediaries in companies that are not listed in the JSE. And histor historically, there we have focused mostly on black companies. And that is where most of these disputes uh, that we have, because um, the, the, the current ones are not the only ones. There are other investments that we've made where people uh, may, may not succeed, and then we take any action that we take against them, not because they are black or any, any color or any gender, because they haven't met the terms and conditions on which we funded them. That is the only basis on which we take legal action. Nothing to do with color, nothing to do um, uh, uh, with their historical uh, pedigree. It's the question of, are they meeting the terms and conditions of each and every transaction that we enter with them? And we don't look at the transaction in totality. We we don't say uh, we have three investments with this uh, entity. We will take action on the three entities. We take action on each one of each entity based on the terms and conditions uh, that uh, 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 we entered with them. The last point, there's, and I think that the, the, the Honorable Shumambo made this point that we don't always revert to litigation. Um, uh, you, you would have heard when, when Dr. Subway uh, started his presentation that sometimes we go into court where there's a need to go to court, but we also go for other uh, alternatives um, where, where there is, whether it's mediation or uh, arbitration, that's what we try, but we can't in, in, in going for alternative um, uh, complaint resolution mechanism detract from the fact that we need to recover where there's a need to recover uh, on terms that are fair to uh, our clients whose money it is that we're looking after. So it must not be understood that we always resort to litigation. We always look for alternatives, but alternatives does not mean that we must stop protecting the interest of the people whose money we're looking after. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah. uh, thanks, Mr. Stolle. Uh, any other comment or question from members? Uh, Technology is beating me. I would like to comment. Okay. We'll allow you uh, uh, also with IO technology to uh, comment or respond. So I wanted to exhaust uh, the list of members of parliament uh, before I come back to you, because we are left with uh, nine minutes. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. It was a question asked by Honorable Shubambu, which I thought I should say something about them. Uh, over to you, Deputy Minister. Then I will take 
Honorable Shivambo, uh, or let's do like this, Deputy Minister. Mm -hmm. Let's take the last round of uh, members, and then uh, then you come. You okay, with. that's fine. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. The Honorable Shibambu, Honorable Abram, Honorable Skosana, and then um, I will take uh, Ayo, and then uh, Mr. M MMI, then uh, Deputy Minister, then we close. Uh, Honorable Shibambu? No, the, 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 the issue about uh, the chairperson of uh, the PIC, it's not that he has asked for money from the PIC. Is he's attempting to buy assets that belong now to the PIC. And these are assets that are in dispute. That is what we're dealing with, to say that can he then clarify that component of these uh, assets, SA home loans, which is in, in, in dispute currently. There's court processes, there's disengagement, and he has put an offer to buy that from himself. Like he's basically want to sell from this side of the counter and tend to go to the other side of the counter to buy the same thing, and because he's a chairperson, we obviously will be involved in the whole process, and and, and it's, it's 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 an issue which has to be responded to. So the whole categorical denial and distancing is not within context because that is what we're talking about, and we have brought this information to to your attention, and must be responded to. And then of course, chair, maybe here or any further deliberations, you need to talk to these things of him being a chairperson and. Um, he may also now being a chairperson of, of a, a discovered bank. PIC chairperson appointed the chairperson of the discovered bank. They inevitably will be in a conflictual relationship there because uh, I'm sure discovery is one uh, or the related entities is one of the investing companies of the PIC in the manner that it is. We have to talk about that in terms of uh, how do we handle it much more differently. Are you done, Honorable Bushbaum? Yes, Chair. Okay. And then uh, Honorable Abram? <clears throat> yes, Chair. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Chair, I, <laughs> I must say that um, the comments by the Deputy Minister had a disarming effect on us as oversighters. And I'm saying that with all due respect, because I, I had my own clarity questions that I wanted to, to, to ask. However, at this point, uh, mine would just be to say, I think in the last meeting, the last engagement that we had with the stakeholders as well as the PIC, uh, the PIC board was represented. And I think what was outstanding was the actual chairperson of the PIC. So I think uh, maybe, Chair, we, we just need to, to check that as to where are we today in terms of that kind of representation. Secondly, for me, Chair, the question that you did ask on a kind of a transformation policy in the PIC still stands relevant. I hear that the CO, CO speaks to the issue of fairness in dealing with stakeholders. But for me, if they do have some measuring stick that would ascertain us that indeed there is fairness according to a policy that they have otherwise the decisions will be will, will will be random and will go either way lastly chair for me is the issue of all these uh, litigations 
And I think much as we do not necessarily have the power to make decisions as to what needs to happen, but I think as a committee that stands to uh, defend or represent the, 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 actual, the actual shareholders in PIC, we should have an interest that says as much as possible, uh, let, us stay, let us try to stay out of court. However, I hear the minister when he says that when all else fails, that would then be the root. But for me, if, for example, the court finds in a particular way, as the chairperson has indicated in his last input, in his last uh, sentences, why then? would we still go further for a court review when the court has decided? Because in that instance, then one would also be interested to know in whose expense are we going to court as PIC? Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks, uh, Honorable Abram, for your input. Um, Honorable Skosane, um, Mflonich. No, see, I talk about the uh, slide of Sean Pegler. Yeah, Chair, I, 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 well, earlier I asked three questions, uh, but I only had a response for only one of the three questions. Uh, uh, the two, the other two questions, I did not hear a response from Mr. Stoll. One, I said that. Are there adverse findings against uh, the Segun Jalo group or its entities and the Matume Maponya investment in the Mpati Commission report? The other question says that uh, while uh, Segun Jalo, one of the uh, representatives, I don't know whether it's advocate, who said who was quoting a, a number of entity number of entities that the PIC said to have invested in them and he was continuously saying no this one is a mis misrepresentation no this one is the misrepresentation so what is the command of the the PIC on that thank you very much chair uh thanks Bus Kasana. okay um let me take uh, uh who's raising that okay let me take Ayo then come to MMI. Uh, Segun Jalo. Uh, um, the, the Honorable Chair, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's Segun Jalo Group uh, mm -hmm. speaking. Firstly, let me take the opportunity, Chair, to thank you, the Honorable Deputy Minister and the members of the committee uh, for giving us, for inviting us and giving us the opportunity to myself and Advocate uh, Wallace Mgorki for being able to present um, uh, I want to state up front, we are not an adversary of the PIC. We have never been. We're a co-investor of the PIC. We're, we're a business at the end of the day. I have enormous respect, you know, for, um, for uh, the chief executive, Mr. Abel Satoli. I've known him for more than 20 years. In the same way as I have respect for Dr. Machila, whom I consider in the highest regard, and Mr. Elias Masalela. So for us, you know, this is really not about adversary and we welcome all attempts to find a solution which is in the best interest of all parties. I think uh, both Mr. Satoli and, and the minister and, and, and Susana made some really valuable points. I want to start off by saying our concerns are also investors' money, the monies that are invested by the PIC but also the money is that we have invested ourselves and on behalf of other shareholders. It is not just the PIC that has invested in these companies. They are a co-investor with us. And in fact, in independent media, the PIC for its own account invested 600 million 
and for the SIM consortium, for the other groupings like the union groupings, the women's groupings, etc., et invested 300 million. We invested 1.2 billion in independent media. That's a very important point to make. We invested more than the PIC. The narrative or the myth out there is that the PIC invested 2.4 billion. That is just not true. The second point is that Mr. Satoli mentioned in his slides that um, they were going to court because they were directed by the party commission to see where the funds went. Well, I mean, this was seven to eight years ago. It's a fact that the full two billion that we invested and the PIC invested together with us and to the consortium, money went to Ireland to pay the Irish for the business. The Irish wanted 2.8 billion and we negotiated them down eventually to 2.1 billion of which the PIC for its own account invested 800 million and to the consortium included that 800 million as it was 300 million. So all that money went. So it doesn't make sense to go to court because you're looking for where the money is because that money was paid to the Irish. But we also have other concerns, Mr. Chair. South Africa has huge unemployment. These two companies targeted by the PIC, and I use the word targeted, and I'll come back to that in a minute, have 4,000 employees. 4,000, that's what we're talking about. We are talking about dependents of at least 20,000 at the time of COVID, at the time of mass unemployment. And 90% of those employees happen to be black and the majority in leadership happen to be African. This is unacceptable that you can target these companies without considering those factors as well. Of course, there are also customers. And they also, what is, the, what is the signal we are sending to investors here and internationally? When you make an investment as a 2 trillion rand asset manager with sophisticated processes, you then turn around, case of independent, eight years later and say, well, you know, we don't want to, 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 to now continue. You turn around to IO three years later and you say, you know what? Our processes were not right because there was no wrongdoing found against a controller or I or anyone for that matter. So what kind of signal are we, are we giving people, right? The fact is that the, this, we are here today because of media reports. Uh, the media reports, which were false, and we've showed that repeatedly, led to the president setting up the party commission and the terms of reference of the party commission was for the PIC's own governance, right? And that has been misconstrued um, to get to where we are today. Now, the minister, Deputy Minister Masondo made a very important point, and I'm in agreement with the minister. He said, let's leave the PIC to invest and let them get on with the job of investing. The fact is, this is exactly what's happened with us. The PIC invested in IO. They went through an 80-page prospectus. It went through many, many months. They invested the funds. Instead, what happens now is they're not being left to invest. Instead, what's happened is that politicians and others are not saying anyone over here, you know, has intervened to against against uh, against us on this matter. I, I want to say, Mr. Chairman, we are being discriminated and targeted, uh, uh, you know, by the PIC. For instance, recently the PIC invested with a company on a 75 times forward multiple at a valuation of 15 billion. I mean, ours was a four, IO was a four times multiple of 16 times. Of course, it was a white company. Of course, it came from Stellenbosch. Okay. So over and above that, the PIC, by its own account, in its own annual report, recently has lost 50 billion, right? They haven't instituted one recovery against that 50 billion, 9 billion against one company, 30 billion against another company. And again, five other companies such as EOH, who are self-admitted crooks, by the way. Um, Tonga, who are self-admitted crooks. Steinath, who are self-admitted crooks. They have an instituted recovery of 50 billion, which they've lost against all of those companies. Mm -hmm. Surely you cannot be defending pensioners' rights if you're not targeting those companies where you've lost 50 billion. <laughs> According to the PIC's own report and the GAPF's own report, by the way, they've lost a total of 170 billion over the last seven years with numerous companies, including one in which they invested with the president of the country. They have not gone on to, 
asked for recovery of that money, right? So as the Deputy Finance Minister has said, there is no consistency here by the PIC. It is clear that PIC is targeting us. This is nothing but McCarthyism. And, and this is regrettable because for an asset manager of this size, one of the largest in the world with proper governance processes, you can't invest in a company and then have buyer's remorse uh, a couple of months later or, 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 or say you, you want your investment back because you know, of media reports or because politicians tell you you must do so, right? So, Mr. Chairman, South Africa needs investment, right? And, 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 and for that to happen, we must have... Um, uh, uh, um, we must have consistency. We must stop targeting people. Allow the PIC to get on with its job. I think that is what's important. But what South Africa also needs now is media freedom. It is independent media, which did something unfashionable. It's independent media that, that um, uh, was able to show the PPE corruption of 40 billion, which robbed our nurses and doctors and others of significant uh, stuff. Had we not done that, that you know, that would not have been exposed in this country. This country needs, and this is an attack on media freedom. The PIC is targeting Second Jalo because of independent media for no other reason. By the PIC's own account, by its previous chairman, Mondley, and its current chairman, it has engaged with others to try and get independent media in someone else's hands that will not expose the corruption that is taking place under the current dispensation. These are very harsh words from my side, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, mm -hmm. but we are a victim of a targeted mm -hmm. campaign. I do not say Mr. Satoni is responsible for that. In fact, I would be very surprised because I know him as a man with integrity. I know him for many, many years, but they are hidden hands. And yes, it is regrettable that our country is going to suffer reputational damages because if a domestic black company, one of the only companies with three listed companies in existence for 25 years with eight investments employing more than 10,000 people, if a company like ours is targeted viciously and aggressively by media detractors and the PIC is party to that, I don't see a future for black people in this country. In fact, black people will have to say, you know what, let's not go and fight with businesses that whites control. Let's not go into sectors which are the domains of white companies. And that is really, really dreadful. The chair, Deputy Chairman made a very, uh, Deputy Minister made a very important point when he said that we should, I'm going to conclude, Mr. Chairman, that we should take the party commission on review. We are definitely going to, going to take that on review and we are definitely going to engage. We didn't take it on the review simply because the facts are there were no adverse findings. But it is clear what we've pointed out to you today is misrepresentation. We'll take it on review. We want to thank you for your advice. We want to thank you, the committee members. I want to say to you, please consider the fact that we are a victim of a targeted campaign, a smear campaign, a discriminatory racist campaign against ourselves. And we urge the PIC not to be party to that under any circumstances. We look forward to engaging with the PIC in a productive way to safeguard the funds of pensioners. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thanks, Dr. Asif. Uh, 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 may, may I request that uh, Honorable uh, Skwasana's questions be answered by the PIC before I come in? Uh, which one, Mr. Mopoy? So that you can remember. About the adverse findings and uh, what was the second one? Uh, Ms. Ms. Mr. I, Chair. Yes, uh, Mr. 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 Uh, Malapela. Uh, in my order, it is supposed to be IO, MMI, PIC, Deputy Minister, and then I close. So can we follow that order? Okay. They, they, they will respond to the question. I think you are reminding them. Okay. okay. Come after you. Yeah, it would have made sense if they came before, but I would like to, again, uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable Deputy Minister, and Honorable Members and everyone present, 
Thank you for the opportunity that we were given today. We came to the People's Parliament as people, as citizens of this country who pay taxes and who vote. And we came because we have exhausted all means uh, possible with a public institution. And uh, our constitution does allow us that we seek uh, oversight uh, from the parliament uh, when we find ourselves in positions of abuse uh, or where systems are being abused. We, the allegations that I've made against the chair, the first one, as Honorable Shibambo has indicated, I put in writing a uh, long time ago and it's on record here. The second allegation that I made is one that came to my attention recently, and it is not a direct investment, but an indirect investment that went into that entity, and I shall provide a proof of such. And we do not feel safe in a public institution whereby the chairman is our competitor, and uh, we have such approaches. We have historical, you know, when, 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 when the CEO of the PIC says that the PIC supports black business, I will dispute it on two points. He mentions historical involvement. Which historical involvement they reneged on, which is why we are here. We have provided scientific and systematic evidence in our uh, presentation which say that they started well, meaning well, and then they stopped. So there is no way we have said the PIC has not invested. We said the PIC is no longer supporting and is actually counter. The second incident is the letter that he says is insignificant that were, was written by employees who actually mentioned that the mandate of the GPF on transformation and investment in unlisted entities has not been renewed. It's a, it's a fact that is printed in a document which if he disputes, he will, he will have that right to dispute. We, we state a fact that we saw on a letter that is provided uh, by the employees. So saying historical does not amount to the same as current and ongoing uh, support. We have honor the honorable member who raised the issue about the court expenses. We have this thing whereby when this court case started with us, two of the officials of the PIC said to us, we are PIC, you cannot finish us. Who are you? We will take you to court until you bleed. Because they don't use their personal money. They use pensioners' money. We have stated that the CEO uh, is disingenuous when he says, we said social money. We said social investment. The money belongs to people, and those people have faces. And when you take their money and go to court and pay millions of court fees, just to delay somebody so that you can bankrupt them, it is egotistical and not factual. And in all this that we have said, we have, in our presentation, provided possible solutions. We have not come here to say that the committee must do PIC's work, but we have come here to say the committee and Treasury must apply more oversight on the PIC, the conflict, and the personalization of issues. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Maponyo. Uh, now, MMI, yeah. PIC, over to you. Then. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Chair, just one bit. The PIC is not recovering anything from us. We have never lost the PIC's money, by the way. They have showed a very 
super performing asset. They have uh, uh, the asset that they um, um, strangled from us, which they said we voluntarily resigned. We did not. We I resigned as a director in order for me not to lose my other assets. And I did not sell any shares or transfer any shares to them. They were illegally transferred after that. Uh, also, the issue of Avgri, we have dealt with it extensively, where the loss of value emanates from their, uh, from, uh, from their decisions. And in Mahai Mataya, the company still has a bright future. The industry is still bright. It was just stopped from the beginning. There were no illegal appointments. We simply made appointments from the company and did not uh, know that PIC wanted to micromanage the company. We appointed competent people with proper CVs to a proper process. Uh, the allegation is unfounded. Uh, they needed reasons uh, to take over the company and install their own people uh, over a company that my family has worked for over many years, and I wouldn't let it happen. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> thanks, uh, Mr. Mpumi. Uh, PIC. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I, I think there were, there were a number of questions that were asked, so I'm going to try and, and deal with them quickly. I know that you have time pressures, Chair. Uh, the, the entities that are involved in dispute, I shared in detail what they are. Uh, so I've indicated we, we, we don't go uh, against any entity in general, we go against specific entities. And in my, in, in my presentation to the committee, I enumerated specific investments. So when people say uh, PIC is alleging, I didn't make any allegations about any other entities, I presented which entities are involved, both in the second Jalo stable and in the uh, MMI stable. So, so when people say, but do we make uh, other reference to any other entities? I uh, only speak to entities that are, sub, are presented to the committee uh, th uh, this morning, Chair. So that's the first one. Uh, and then the, 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 the issues around uh, targeting any specific, and I, I'd like to appreciate uh, Dr. Suve's acknowledgement that um, we, 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 we are people of integrity, we want to do the right things. Uh, we do not target uh, black companies at all. We, we, we haven't done it in the past. Uh, we will not do it in the future. We only deal with companies that are not meeting the terms and conditions that we've entered to, and that's all we do. When companies perform, we're more than happy to retain them. And, 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 and the, 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 the taste of the pudding is not what I say. It's the fact that these companies that we're talking about are companies that we have invested in. The reason why we're taking any action has nothing to do with the color of the investee companies, but with the fact that they are not meeting their uh, terms and conditions that they, they themselves signed into and entered into without any duress. That was the agreement that we entered into, and we simply want those conditions to be acceded to and met. That's all that we want to do. Um, the last point is about the GPF mandate. Anybody that says the GPF mandate to invest in unlisted has um, uh, expired, does not understand the mandate that the GPF has with us. Uh, and they might actually benefit from simply looking at the, the GPF's mandate. G the GPF has a, 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 an allocation of 11% to unlisted. Um, that has never been changed and still stands. The details on the modalities, how we manage it, that is something that is constantly being agreed on uh, with the client. But to make a statement that uh, the GPF has suddenly reneged on its management of, um, of investing in unlisted companies. That is not the true statement. Uh, Chair, the, 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 the asked, uh, there was a question about adverse findings. I think that the, 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 the point that the Deputy Minister was making was that to the extent that people are unhappy with any provisions of uh, the, the Commission, the PIC cannot address that, nor can the National Treasury. So the the, 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 the reference to adverse findings that to the extent that people are happy with, 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 the, with, with the commission's findings, we cannot respond to that. Um, on the second representation about entities, I've already indicated that we don't speak about second JALO, we speak about only the companies that we have invested in in, in second JALO. We don't speak about the whole group in totality, we target specific entities. 
And then, um, uh, why do we appeal the issue in court? I find that very interesting. So we went to court, the court ruled in our favor. They appealed, but we must not exercise the right of appeal. That, that I find very strange because we acted on the initial decision of a court, which they correctly appealed as their right is, and they won on appeal, and we are now appealing. Now to say that we shouldn't appeal, I find that very odd. So they must exercise their rights, but we should not exercise our rights. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Minister, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think on the first question issue raised by Honorable Shvambu on the allegation related to um, the chair, I think the CE of the PIC has uh, eloquently answered it. And um, what I was referring to with regard to reporting to other relevant authorities, it was one the words such as looting of this or that company was invoked. And I said, it is in that context that um, if there's, there's such issues or such um, uh, incidents, the matter should be taken to relevant authorities. And I think the, insofar as the chair uh, of the PIC is concerned, like I said, the CEO has eloquently answered that. Number two, look, I, I, we, we have no issue about the any resolution or conflict resolution mechanism that each of the parties that are in conflict choose to undertake. We, we, we not, uh, whether they choose settlement, whether they choose, I mean, out of court settlement or in court settlement is the issue between parties. If they don't agree on even on the, um, some of the, these mechanisms, uh, it is the courts which must basically decide in the final analysis. And I think the CE has made a very important point that we cannot say that the PIC has no right to exercise um, its legal recourse. Um, and, and as he eloquently pointed out that um, the decision was taken in favor of the PIC or some decisions were taken in favor of the PIC and the PIC had to go and defend its own uh, decision. But as a general principle, um, any uh, conflict resolution mechanism that A, make both parties happy, B, it is in the interest of the clients and South Africa, I mean, all of us, we like that because the legal disputes, they are taxing financially for both parties and it is not necessarily in their interest to resolve issues through the legal mechanism. But in the absence of consensus amongst parties, uh, they are left with no choice but to allow the courts of this country to resolve this issue. So the point here I was simply making is that we cannot, as National Treasury, prescribe that go and resolve this issue in this way and that way. I think we've got confidence in the board, in the management of the PIC to uh, decide what is in the best interest of their clients, what's in the best interest of South Africans in resolving any other matter. We, we cannot uh, prescribe to them on how they should basically deal um, with some of this uh, dispute. Yes, they are costly legally because they've got to pay legal fees, uh, but in the absence of any other legal resolution or settlement that will leave the PIC and its clients, we are left with, they are left with no choice but to continue uh, along the lines of, of the courts. And I think there's an important point raised about the recent media reports, particularly on Sibaya, we are worried about that, and we're confident that the board uh, of the PIC uh, is dealing with that. And from time to time, we'll seek to understand what's actually going on in that regard. And of course, this committee, which represents South Africans, the people, should also be worried 
about uh, such reports. And I'm sure going forward, you are going to get uh, feedback on how the PIC is dealing uh, with these uh, issues. And of course, the, the issue about the role of the PIC, the GPF, uh, in growing the economy and transforming the economy, it's something that uh, all of us as public representatives, including myself, we need to debate, continuously debate. And if there's a need for us to make certain amendments insofar as uh, certain uh, laws, we should do so as people, as lawmakers. And, but once we've made those laws, I mean, we, we've got to monitor how they are implemented and make sure that uh, all of us, we are bound by those laws that we are uh, making. The last point, it's um, Dr. Survey says that they are being targeted by the hidden hands. But I was gonna be, I was interested in hearing more about this. Who are they? Uh, how is this thing being done? Because, Chair, I, I prefer to deal with facts, like many of us would prefer to deal with facts. Because in the absence of facts, um, we, we're just going to get into um, conjuncture uh, theories, which uh, we, we, it will be unfortunate, because I think it will be important for Dr. Survey to say, here are the facts, this is how I'm being targeted, or this is how uh, black companies are being targeted and these are the solutions because I wouldn't uh, be want to be part or any one of us in the National Treasury PIC will want to be part of any unfair targeting, unfair treatment of anyone um, in, the, in business. So I think uh, it will be important for Dr. Save to present facts and we deal with facts. Um, and, and again, the, the point about the PIC, the terms of reference are quite clear that it was established to establish whether there was any impropriety regarding investment decisions by the PIC, uh, because these things were reported in the media, uh, particularly you know, 2017, 2018. And the question before the commission was whether uh, there, was, there was any impropriety regarding the investment decisions by the PIC and whether the PIC contravened any legislation or contractual obligations uh, which may have resulted in any undue uh, benefit. So the PIC, I mean, the Mpati report has given us the report as we sit with it um so if there's any other issue that we are not aware of i think it should be brought to uh, our attentions based on facts and we will have to st see how we basically deal with those issues because i'm, I'm just worried about uh, making allegations and uh, statements without us saying here are the facts uh, so chair uh, I really want to appreciate uh, this uh, conversation that we've had. I think it also provides us with more opportunity uh, to continuously reflect on ourselves as government. I think this conversation, they help in presenting a mirror to us to look at ourselves, whether we are doing the right things in terms of the law of this country. And I think uh, so far, like I said, if there's anything that uh, parties are not happy with the findings, whether parties in this platform or parties not in this virtual platform, they're at liberty to take the matter uh, to court in order to challenge some of the findings. And where there's dispute res uh, conflicts around the contractual relationship that the PIC has entered with other parties, I think that better, better place uh, to deal with that fairly and very consistently. Thank you so much, Chair. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Minister. Um, what I hear members to be saying is that uh, the court should not always be the last point of uh, arbitrage. 
Uh, if ever there are other platforms that can be uh, used, uh, they should also be open. I understand the board, including the board of the PIC, to be an accounting authority. And uh, the minister is the executive authority. So there's nothing that stops uh, stakeholders, like we have the PIC, I mean, the Serenjalo or IO, MMI to approach even the executive to find a solution because uh, PIC account to the Minister of uh, Finance. So we should not understand it to mean that uh, if there is a matter that uh, uh, people who have got business with the PIC, they want to raise with the executive. Uh, the door is closed. They should only go to court. Uh, I hope that is not uh, my understanding because the executive has the responsibility as they have been elected by the people of this country to attend to issues that are being raised by members of the public. It is against that background that uh, when we're approached by IO and MMI, we could not close the door. Uh, actually, it was going to be illegal because uh, the Parliament of South Africa promotes a participatory democracy. So any member, whether through a petition or through a request, will want to meet the committee we are open to that uh, member of the public in the spirit of uh, participatory uh, democracy. So we are fully aware of our mandate as a parliament that uh, if there is a matter that is before the court, this is how we treat uh, that matter because uh, we respect the doctrine of uh, separation of powers. Hence, in this meeting, we avoided uh, to deal with the merits of issues that are before the court. However, there's no way that uh, we can't listen to stakeholders who come and want to raise issues with us. And the understanding that I have from uh, MMI is that uh, uh, they feel that uh, if there are amicable ways of uh, resolving these issues, uh, they are more than prepared to find a solution through that uh, mechanism. And they went into a breakdown of how they wanted the Mahaya Makaya uh, SA uh, home, home loan, Bafepi. Uh, to be uh, resolved between themselves and the PIC. And I hope that uh, the room, or, or I mean the door will be open for them to resolve those issues uh, with the uh, uh, PIC. And we are not going to prescribe how these matters uh, should be resolved. But uh, our interest is to make sure that uh, the money of the workers is secured. And the loans that uh, uh, businesses uh, get from PIC are serviced and are paid back. And uh, it is also my understanding that uh, IO is committed uh, to repay uh, and service the loans that it got from uh, uh, the PIC. And uh, in between, I don't think that every time there is a dispute, the solution is go to court. We are going to complain at a later stage about the courts, like we have done before as people of South Africa, that uh, the courts are overreaching. They are taking over the responsibility of governance. Sometimes they do so because 
we, we, when we have to do our work as a legislature, as an executive, we don't. And people end up going to courts and courts end up making uh, findings and judgments, which sometimes bothers on their work or the responsibilities of parliament and the executive. So we believe that uh, as Honorable Abram has emphasized that if there are other platforms and mechanisms of resolving some of these issues, let's first exhaust those uh, platforms and make sure that uh, those who are raising concerns are heard. We are not making a finding against the uh, PIC that uh, they've closed the doors uh, of uh, engaging uh, those that they've borrowed, I mean, uh, lended money to. Uh, nobody has made that finding. But what we are emphasizing is that uh, let there be amicable relationship between the PIC and uh, those that have borrowed money from, uh, from them. Uh, <clears throat> we, as it has been proposed, uh, uh, we'll have to check our program, Alan and Tebuho, that uh, in the next engagement with the PIC, either when they present the APP uh, or the uh, quarterly uh, report, uh, we'll have to be briefed about the transformation policy. The issue of Black economic empowerment is a very important issue so that we redress the injustices of the past. And we should not be apologetic about that. If big institutions, public institutions like PIC do not have a deliberate policy to empower blacks, you know out there in the private sector how difficult it is for black businesses, for black women, for black youth to get uh, 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 finance or credit for their businesses. And Mr. Stoller says that uh, there is that policy and PIC has gone all out to support uh, black people. So let's request that uh, in the next engagement, uh, Mr. Stoller and the chairperson and the uh, national treasurer, uh, you present before this committee uh, that this is how we go about as PIC to empower black people. Because again and again, uh, there are statements made that um, uh, there is biasness towards uh, the previously advantaged. Uh, I don't have the facts before me here. Uh, it is up to you in the next meeting to refute that and show us the policy and efforts to empower black people. Uh, so, uh, uh, thanks very much, um, honorable members. No, uh, Chair, um, I, no, I just want to, um, we, we have no issue as the executive, as the minister in meeting anyone. Actually, we meet people all the time. It's one thing to meet people. It's another to, what do you do with their complaints? Because all what we we're saying was simply to say, yeah, the limits um in so far as these issues are concerned it's not a question of refusing to meet anyone it's not a question of abdicating our executive responsibility there, there are just limits that you have set yourselves as the lawmakers on what we can do and what we cannot do so i thought i should clarify that there should not be an impression that we are refusing to meet anyone we are refusing to engage anyone uh so i, I thought i should just make that clear chair if we come across as such that was not the intention. Okay, let's also make it clear to IO and MMI, as you have committed yourself, uh, uh, Honorable Deputy Minister, that your doors are open for you to engage uh, them and others who want to raise uh, issues uh, that affect them. And we are not saying that uh, you have to adjudicate in a manner that uh, like there is a matter before court uh, you say we stop the court process and uh, this is how things must be done. But uh, I thought it's like they are raising uh, maybe an impression that uh, they did not have that platform. If that platform is open, I think uh, uh, IO and MMI as they are here 
uh, they should also use that platform even before they come to parliament. So we welcome uh, uh, your commitment, Deputy Minister, that uh, you, you do provide platform uh, to stakeholders and those who do business uh, with the uh, SOEs uh, under your uh, administration. Uh, so thanks very much, uh, honorable members uh, uh, of the committee, members of the committee, the deputy minister, uh, Dr. Masondo, uh, officials from parliament, officials uh, from uh, uh, PIC National Treasury, uh, also our stakeholders, uh, IO and the second yellow group in general, uh, led by uh, Dr. Iqbal Sif, uh, MMI, uh, Mr. Maponyo. I see Maponyo, unlike in the previous meeting uh, uh, where you were a bit casual. Today I see you, uh, you are well prepared and uh, uh, it's the Maponyo that I know. You are <laughs> elegant. <laughs> on, the, on the lighter note, uh, thanks very much for coming back and uh, making your case. Uh, and uh, everybody who's an att in attendance, uh, thanks very much. Uh, we'll, uh, from time to time, uh, want to see uh, progress in the issues that uh, have been raised here. We have got uh, a resolution tracking mechanism as a committee. So it was not a, a, a talk show uh, that we were engaging on. Uh, we are a decision-making body. So we'll make sure that the issues that uh, have been uh, agreed upon, uh, there are follow-up and uh, see to it that uh, they are attended to. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, uh, let's uh, adjourn uh, the meeting uh, till we, we, we meet uh, again. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thanks, committee. Thanks, colleagues. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you.